Good morning, uh, everybody. It's Sunday morning, I think. I was so fucked up all day yesterday and all night long with a real bad migraine. And when I get real bad migraines, I can't um, really talk or see very well. I can't walk around. I have to take something to lay down and knock me out because I be in so much pain. Um... I wanted to do this live. Good morning, babies. I think I see some of y'all on here. I haven't been feeling the greatest. Y'all know I'm dealing with my housing situation and having to move and dealing with evictions and rats and leaks and fungus and mold in here. So that's also taking a toll on my head, my health, and uh, you know, having upper respiratory infections, sinus infections in my eyes, my ears. <sighs> some days I can't walk. I'm so dizzy and I feel so lethargic. I have to lay down and I've been dealing with that this week and swelling like in my face. Um, so when it's like that, I have to not push so hard, but I still have to push. I, When the messages come to me, I just know that now if I can't, you know, get up and walk or stand up or dress up, it's okay for me to sit in the dark or lay in the dark and uh, still peak my, speak my truth. I, look, I got to tell you something, okay? I have to do this for King Nipsey, Nipsey Hussle, Amias, Joseph Ashkadon. We're still in his transition anniversary, the third year, and he's really, really pissed, and he's still talking, talking shit. That's what you do when somebody cuts your damn throat and your own OGs and family and so-called fuck buddies and lovers and baby mamas that you trusted like a wife stab you in your goddamn back. So it's not easy to just walk away off the earth plane when you, your soul, mind, your chakras, your aura, all the arteries and veins have been severed ruthlessly, gutted from your goddamn physical body and snatched out of it. And sent you into another dimension so they can make you a straw man, a hollow man. And then go in and steal the birthright, the blood rights of Amias, Joseph Ashkadam, known as Nipsey Hussle. And there are several that are hanging with him, like Chris Lighty and, and the other man, Jermaine Stewart, I think the first name is, and Kurt Cobain. MLK, JFK, Steve Jobs, Einstein, Mac Miller. Mac Miller still so high out of his goddamn mind and still drinking on that goddamn Jolly Rancher shit that he motherfucking like and mention a blue drink, a blue liquor, a blue lean or something with some codeine, blue lean and goddamn codeine that this motherfucker, him, this poor baby, he's just like a little child. Baby so fucked up in the head, I can't even get a goddamn clear, coherent sentence out of his goddamn ass. They got him so fucked up and high and laid out and seduced and fucked and sucked his dick and took the sperm out of his goddamn body and put curses on that man and curses on him, that woman, that manager that also managed Nipsey and that's managing his baby mama. The actress, they got a little boy and managed other people around them. She got him to sign that contract and sold his soul for goddamn fake gold. And then stole the gold and money back. Said that man killed his goddamn self. Jacked that man up on all that motherfucking juice. And drug and dope. This motherfucker here just floating goddamn it. Sky high. Sky high. Sky high. Like goddamn ODB. ODB back down here too. In Indian territory. Which black Indian territory. Which would be goddamn the descendant state known as New York City. Where they goddamn stole all that land from them black people and black Indians and fucking flooded it and moved the maps around, made fake maps and renamed it. ODB is a motherfucking black Indian. African and motherfucking Indian. And he says some of his roots go to the Orient, which would be Asia and Africa, as, as, as well as a lot of so-called fake African American name people. That's not your goddamn name. War in Mexico. There are different Mexican and Egyptian factions mixed with black here in Aztec in the United States and in these same areas where the black people, so-called Native American, which are indigenous black Indians, live. 
And, and see, this goes back to what Dr. Sabi and Nipsey Hussle told me about the water, watching the water. Disease and different organizations in every state are watching the water. You have DNA that come out your pussy and ass and dick and mouth that goes through the sink, the toilet, and the bathtub. They are monitoring your DNA. They are monitoring different diseases, monitoring. You know, I can't say the name, God damn it. These different diseases come up. These different sicknesses come up. Different forms of cancer. You will see not only the strains of cancer that you know are popping up, getting very, very strong. He showed me an urge. And for some, he just showed me a Florida urge, a tree in Florida where they've been sprayed. And these oranges got some fucked up with them. And this water that you drinking that we get that's going to the sewer system where they taking your DNA out of it. They measuring the amount, the levels of certain diseases and viruses in this water. Then they go in the goddamn lab, take as they taking feces and waste out of this water, your sewer water, which is also part of your drinking water. There are different strains of organism, different strains of viruses that are going to pop up. I seen one pop up last night, a new one, but I can't say the name, as you know. Cancer is also a form of virus. Venereal diseases mixed with other viruses where people are not going to be able to get rid of them, create different warts. And a lot of these people will come, become sterile. Women sterile in their womb. Children genet genetically altered and sick, creating diseases in them inside of a woman's womb. Dying in the womb. Women being pregnant falling dead of heart attacks because of blood clots in the arteries in the vein that go in there and affect the baby. Baby is spontaneously dying in the womb, spontaneously aborting in the womb. Women and babies grieving because a woman have to turn herself in at the hospital at a particular time so they can make her induce birth to a damn dead baby. God damn it. Physically dead. Excuse me, physically dead. But yet alive, because I see the spirits of these children hanging on the death trees, sacrificing the flesh, hanging around the auric field of the mother that conceived them and brought them into this life in vaginal power time in the earth realm, hanging still in the ether, wanting to come back, wanting her to get pregnant again or regenerate or find another womb because of the war time, the end time. Nipsey said it's going to be a dog day summer, a hot dog day summer. Blood everywhere. Motherfuckers shooting, robbing, stealing, raping, killing, sucking dick, doing drugs, selling drugs. People actually are literally taking drugs. I see a people, piece of paper unfolding. Different colors on them like candy. Different symbols on them. Powder. Sniffing the powder. Smoking, shooting it. And then getting so high you touch the sky like ODB and falling backwards dead in the damn street. Blood running, death running. He says it's going to be a dog day summer. Robbery, bank robber, people shooting each other, shooting at the police, killing policesses. It says it's going to be some scandals coming up with these policesses in these big cities. That's that double dealing, double dipping. I have no problem with the police. I believe you do not defund. You don't want to defund the police because it's really going to be goddamn Bill Hitchcock. Wild, wild west in this motherfucker showing up. Especially if they're giving people guns. A lot of people are getting guns. A lot of these police is tied up uh, with feds and motherfucking federal informants and then dealing with drug dealers, motherfucking murderers, uh, ex motherfucking murderers, chopping people up and killers. These police is dead in the middle of this motherfucking shit as informants, as drug dealers, as motherfucking buying prostitutes and prostituting their own motherfucking ass for information and to take motherfuckers down. These police is dealing with embezzlement, goddamn counterfeit money. The money so goddamn good at counterfeit, you can't even tell that it's motherfucking fake money. Dealing with the United States, Asia, Russia, FBI, CIA. And all of the tobacco and firearms divisions of every city near you, goddammit. Mexico, California, Nevada, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Atlanta, all these places got an underground network for blood products, child sacrifice, human sacrifice, organ, black markets, and organ transfer and consumption of organs. Y'all need to wake up. It's a lot of uh, human beings that are vampires around you. You think that they just making these werewolf and vampire Films that just entertain you and scare you out your sleep at motherfucking night and make the boogeyman come and see you in your goddamn dream. They have frozen parts, frozen blood and shit, 
How you think they get a big old bank in these hospitals? Because most of them motherfuckers that's over the goddamn hospital do these rituals and have to have a certain amount of blood to drink and a certain blood type and a certain amount of organs to consume and a certain amount of motherfuckers with different ethnic group and different blood mixture that have to die on the table in the operating room. Then they come to you, I'm so sorry your loved one didn't make it. We couldn't save her from the bullet wounds or the disease or we tried to cut the cancer out and we opened them up and then they grew. They put the cancer in there, goddamn it. Why you think they make you give all this money? Because it's the words that it's a word play. It's always an opposite meaning. It's for the words they play game with you and lie and tell you one thing, but it's double speaking the goddamn message, goddamn it. And it's always a method to the magic and a, a message in the music. People living in tents, people shitting all on the goddamn ground right in front of you uh, with dog, living with dogs. Eating a dog, roasting a dog. You think they roasting some damn t- teriyaki chicken and chewbacca chicken? Goddamn it, out down out there roasting it in the park. Or I damn one of them tent camps on the goddamn fire. That sliced up damn little buddy that's supposed to be your damn dog that's, <laughs> that's missing. Here, little chippy. Here, little buddy come shaking their damn dog pan and they water cup. Calling them goddamn dog. Arr, the dog don't fucking gum. Here, here, calm your little chihuahua, them easy to get, goddamn, that's like a little snack you put on a Subway sandwich, they real little, they fit in your pocket, goddamn it, fit in your fucking pocketbook and shit, damn, some of them snatch they motherfucking ass up, a lot of these animals out in the woods as well, these wolf and dog and shit, mixtures of hybrid dogs are very bad, they can't find, they gonna eat off each other, big dog eat little dog, goddamn it, big bank eat little goddamn bank. You're going to be down there looking for Jimmy crying and the damn dog. They done got them mixed Jimmy up with some goddamn pork and bean and rice. Mashed him up, goddamn it. Put some few slices of Spam on there and cheese and onion. Eating up, goddamn little buddy. You going to the dog pound looking for his ass. The dog shelter and shit. Some of these damn humans going to be around here. Make a hoagie sandwich. Out damn little buddy. Had a dog sliced up real thin, like some goddamn beef jerky, beef jerky some mayonnaise, fucking goddamn D- honey Dijon mustard with some goddamn onion, tear rocket sauce, goddamn it, hot pepper and shit with jalapeno. Really dress his ass up, eat the shit out of him with some damn uh, curly Q fries on the side of it with some of that damn Mexican season. And a damn Coca Cola, goddammit. He said, that's what this shit. That's what this shit is motherfucking coming to, goddammit. You're gonna see all this shit and you're gonna have to take care of yourself. Fuck looking for the government to take care of you, goddammit. Like Tupac said, staring through the world through my rear view, screaming to God, he can't hear you. Because that same God you're gonna be screaming to at the same time you're screaming to him to come down here and get you, a little girl will be raped and motherfucking slaughtered. And have her guts busted and thrown on the side of the motherfucking road. And your baby and all of them will come missing and on the black market stolen. Laying in a goddamn dumpster dead. See, all this shit, y'all better really open up. And he also showed me Benjamin Franklin. So I got to go back and look. I don't know if Benjamin Franklin and George Washington. So Benjamin Franklin will be dealing with electricity and water systems because a lot of these water systems at home are controlled by electricity. And these water systems where they, the states store this water, they're supposed to be clean and fluid. You won't be getting none of it, goddammit. They give you an alternate supply that's full of animals and dogs and different viruses and diseases from them. Viruses and diseases. Out here in these fields, these farmland where they're raising this wheat, that's a hybrid wheat, and it has a particular pest that eats on it. They claim we have made that impossible to happen right now because we got GMO vegetables and plants, which is very helpful to humans. But no, it's not because the hybrid is also prone to a certain bug, a super strain bug that is resistant to antibiotics and pesticides. Well, a lot of people will be eating these wheat breads and breads made out of these different fillers and derivatives and cancer-causing 
agents that they have sprayed on these weeds and on these animals in the field, these, these pests, so-called to make them flea repellent, tick repellent, and whatever strain of insect that naturally in the system of life eats on particular flowers and weeds and grains and, and pollinate, supposed to pollinate certain flowers and vegetables that's not going to be happening. They'll be rotting and you eat them. They will already be dead and death and decay inside of them. So you have to start growing your own things and you have to watch the water and watch the soil. You can have a water or a hydroponic, hydroponic garden. You don't need soil or you have to get a special soil and get worms, healthy worms to fertilize the soil or it will be no good and you will be antibiotic resistant. Your body will not respond to any treatment from any disease that they also shooting people. These medicines that you have will cause these issues on purpose so that the cure that they give you on purpose will not work and will kill you. I remember talking to a friend of mine. I did a medical reading for his mother. His mother didn't believe in this type of thing. Until I told him to tell his mother things she knew that I could not know. Because it was things that although he was my friend, he did not know. Because these were things before he was born or when he was a child that he did not know. Once he told his mother, his mother demanded to put me on a three-way. I started to look at her condition and saw that she had a cancer that had metastasized from one organ throughout her whole body. Went into from the stomach to the brain. And I told her that you could still beat this, you could survive because this was a parasite. This was a worm that was talking to me and was talking to me from the soul of other men that she had had sex with. One was his father. And guilt had eaten her up from the things that she had done and things that she neglected to do. Out of her blindness, she didn't do this on purpose, but she left her son with her play sister who had a son who was a fucking deviant and a pedophile who raped her little boy in his ass and told him, let's play the game Twister. I think that's the game that has the white plastic sheet you lay on the ground with the big red and blue and yellow and green polka dots. And you have to bend over and touch the dots. So when the little boy, eight or nine years old, bent over with his hands down, ass up, grabbed him and fucked him in his ass, put his grown, like a teenager, a big grown man ass, dick in this boy's ass, and telling him, he said, I'll never forget it because it was a clock I could see. And the boy was watching the clock with him and he said, oh, just hold on, just hold on, hold on, a few more minutes, a few more minutes. And once the arm of the clock it wasn't a digital clock. It's a regular clock that has the arms, short hand, long hand. When the arm hit a particular number, he said, okay, okay, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Pulled his ass, dick out of this boy's ass. The boy tells his mother. His mother and his the play sister, which was the older boy's mother that raped him, So they need to go to counseling. And then admitted this boy had done this before and somebody had done it to him. So the boy was uh, gay. And he reached out to me because he had tested positive for HIV. And I told him there was a health protocol. So we started to work on it. He was like my son. He got very, very, we got very close. And then his mother, I said, your mother's coming up in these reading. I need to speak to your mother. And she's like, I don't want to talk to her. I ain't got time for that shit. I don't, I don't, I don't want to listen to no shit like that. That lady crazy. And I said, okay. So I said, tell her this and that. And the dad was this and that. So she goes, whoa, as soon as I get off work, you're going to put her on the phone. We started to talk and we became like sisters. She became so comfortable with me, I could be on the phone with her alone. She didn't want her son to no longer be on the three-way because there's things that she didn't want him to know. And she was extremely guilty. She hated him being a homosexual. And she hated him having men as lovers. But she also hated herself and beat herself up because she knew she put her baby in that position. And she was not aware of listening to her intuition to know that her sister, her play play sister, didn't tell her that her son was a booty busting, boy loving, homosexual pedophile. He wasn't a lover of men 
and want to have a healthy sexual relationship with an adult man his age, he liked to violate little boys as some grown men had violated him. That drove her crazy, the guilt of both things and not knowing. Mm. I'm telling her because the cancer cells start to talk to me. They come down from where they were, I think in Baltimore somewhere, and start to have these conversations with me. So I'm repeating this stuff and she agrees. A lot of this cancer and these other diseases in women's female system, the breasts, the pussy, ovaries, cervix, all of those things, many times, cancer develops because of a woman's guilt and her lack of love of self and not standing in vagina power because your mother in this society and everybody tells you to give your vagina power away to them. Always be a giver and never a taker and be ashamed to be selfish sometimes and take care of yourself and ask for things for yourself. You're taught to give it all away. That's the right thing to do. And never shield and protect yourself psychically against black magic and witchcraft. Because you're going to hell. But you're already in hell. And you're taught to live in hell by giving all of your power away. So that goes, this ties into the health thing that I'm telling you about. And these drugs that kill you instead of helping you. She was taking all of these cancer drugs. First she started to go on my protocol. And cleansing the blood, the lungs, the arteries, and the veins, and detox and herbs. So she started to do that. She started to improve. But the problem was, it's if it is with a lot of people. They make it so that you cannot have a juicing and holistic lifestyle. You cannot take herbs. You cannot kill the diseases in your body naturally because insurance does not pay for that. And it is so expensive. Organic foods and farming and herbs, they make them so expensive. You cannot afford to buy that lifestyle unless you make a lot of money. And exclusively do that and refuse the radiation and chemo and the other medications that are supposed to kill and treat cancer, which they don't. Oh boy, I got to watch it on this thing because they don't, they like to take your shit down and don't want you to talk about that. So soon I'm going to have to take this video down. As soon as I do it, you can't say nothing because if you say something about this and you don't want to go along with these things, they'll say that you are a liar, you're going against the law, you're telling people lies and shit. Just like they got me suspended on YouTube right now by mentioning Dr. Sabi and alternatives on YouTube. Took my fucking video and, and damn suspended my ass. I can't even go over there and upload nothing and say shit. So I'm warning the mother because a guardian angel came down that's to be her friend and to watch over her in this particular uh, reincarnation of life. And the angel is passing her thoughts, feelings, and messages and what the angel doesn't know that her higher self knows. And I said, you're not going to make it. If you keep on taking these cancer meds, and I said, send me the name of all of your cancer meds. And I'm going to research them for you. And we're going to talk when you get off work. I started to research these things. I said, ma'am, would you also please look these up? Because I'm sure the pharmacist gave you a pamphlet. It's not like it's a secret. Even though the doctor didn't tell you. I told her there was an experimental drug they were giving her. An experimental protocol that had not been tested and completely approved, it was still like in um, trial uh, phase and given to people that agreed to take it secretly in little trial circles. Some people given the placebo, some people given the real thing that was sick and had nothing to lose to take it. But they were not told that this medication they were given as a trial would also kill them and be just as toxic excuse me it is more toxic than the cancer and it would not really heal them that's a secret that the pharmaceutical reps told the doctors and the doctors were not to tell the patient but they would make a lot of money even in the death of people so as i'm looking at this and the angel is reading off the drugs and speaking to me i said it's not the cancer that is going to kill you if you don't stop, it is what you are taking. And from researching and reading it, she also read it because it said it. 
out of all the side effects that she would be given, not being able to walk, not being able to stand, brain problems, particular infections and viruses, she also read it with me and she could barely speak. It was, it was taking a breath out of her because it was draining her soul out of her through the brain and the central nervous system and spinal cord. She was about to go into a coma and shut down where she'd not be able to talk. Coherently hear words, perceive them and think and give you a rational sentence and response. She was going to become comatose because I could feel it slipping out of her and she would barely be catching her breath talking to me as i'm telling her this i say you cannot do this you have to stop taking this and she looked at it she said i know that this will kill me but i'm going to take it anyway because it's better than nothing and i said you will become nothing if you you're not gonna last long she said i know that but i'm still hope because these are all potential side effects. I said, no, they're not potential side effects from me reading the, the side effects. You are already living them. You're already experiencing them. You can barely breathe to talk to me. She said, I know, but I don't know what else to do. Because let me also tell you that when you take a particular drug, whether it's a street derivative of it, or a licensed prescription derivative of it. They all have a soul mind and a group mind that links when you take it that is controlled by the master that created it. Or the groups of ma Oh, shit. Let's just see. I'm getting ready to go into it. This is a part of Nipsey's message, and I'm going to go into it, baby. Mm. What you all don't know and you fail to realize you think Hogwarts and Harry Potter, you think that's for children's entertainment and a joke? Hmm? When you see these children and Harry Potter and now the strains of it, you think the author just pulled that out of her ass in a late night dream? That's a witch. And she's bringing that shit to you to infiltrate the world with it. Now, I have no problem with magic. It's just a problem when the shit being worked on you and fucking you up and people above you have it and doing it to rule you and rule the world and you are the fucking slave and you are the food being eaten for supper. Yes, supper. These pharmacists, these doctors, these scientists, these professors, these teachers from pre-K, your doctor that delivers them, I know... Not because of just what Nipsey's telling me, but I have been a victim of those type of doctors where I was cut up and butchered and spells put on me and I almost died several times. That's how I found out the hard way that a lot of these doctors practice black magic and necromancy. He just gave me a word before I got on here called corporate necromancy. Corporate necromancy is on your dollar. Told me to tell you to look at the dollar bill, dollar, 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 dollar bill, y'all. When you see the web with the tiny spider and the eye with the capstone, with the top separated as they father come back to the earth, Lucifer, so that it can be sealed and, and lowered down on the pyramid on the dollar bill where it is one pyramid with the all-seeing eye through the computer and the internet and your phone that you love so much and metaverse and the chip and the pieces that you temporarily put in your ear that that uh elon musk want to go on and merge you mind the machine and jack your ass up into other dimensions and jack you into space they want to put that in your chip and merge you with it that is the devil and the demon that's the all-seeing eye and that's the magic that runs through the dollar that bind you you never wondered why some people like in the black community, they spend trillions instead of them circulating their own businesses five, six, seven times before they circulate it out of the industry and out of their community they don't have. It's not like a black Wall Street or any of the thriving businesses in Atlanta like Buckhead belonged to black people originally and black natives and whites killed them and ran them out of there and then built it and said that they own it, it belongs to them. That was black cities and all these cities in the United States. You see these big old lakes and Lake Lanier and shit. 
and Piedmont Park and all these lakes that y'all enjoy swimming in and these pools, they kill black people and flooded their city alive. See, we're dealing with so much water as Nipsey and Dr. Sabre are saying and death of the people of color and the destruction of their cities that living flesh people was literally drowned in their own city in Atlanta and all of the major cities in the United States and then covered that shit up, a bulldoze over them, blood, flesh, and bone, destroyed the city, renamed it, got the original la uh, map, and hid that from you. Then created another map and land plots and created cities of their own and justified it and said it is progress. It helps the future and the means justifies the end. The end justifies the means, excuse me. And your ancestors are crying out through the water, the rivers, the lakes, and in the oceans where black people refuse to be slaves coming from Africa and were so proud and were so strong in who they are and what they are and their own gods and spirituality. They'd rather jump over and kill themselves and be eaten by the sharks than to be slaved and be continued to be raped and have their children sold into slavery. Uh, they are now crying out from the waters of living life the living waters through your womb and through your vagina. A lot of these babies that are being conceived with this sperm, the sperm of these men that are getting you pregnant also have these dead people <laughs> that were murdered in the rivers of life that were turned to bloody red waters of death are still in your DNA and you don't know them because you talk to Norm, you you talk to call this white Jesus and he going to save you and give you prosperity. But it's just like just something he just told me real quick. Just like you see a lot of these people in these mega churches doing well and making money. Yes, a lot of them are gifted and very talented and they make, they make money. But a lot of them are secretly doing magic. And when they go and bind with the preacher on these secret sex cults with these preachers and a rob, steal, kill and destroy anybody that speak against the preacher or to give them money, they're only continuing to thrive and be successful because they are giving their money to that one dollar bill that has the web on it and the eye and the ink sipping spider the black widow on it they are merging it with the money and the mind of the warlock that is the mega preacher that is over the cup mm. that's why they thrive and then when they leave they die a lot of them go under get physically sick go bankrupt don't have no money when they lose the demonic bond uh, that is attached to the dollar. Why do you think uh, some races like what they call black, which is basically nom de guerre, dead, a dead nation within a nation? Why do they give their money out? They hate each other. They hate they look. They'll destroy you. You got a black business and nails. They'll destroy you and then try to become you, compete with you and be you and do what you're doing. So if everybody doing the same thing, ain't nobody going to make money. Y'all going to neutralize each other and cancel each other out because you're taught to be cursed. You curse and you curse yourself. You put yourself down. You hate the image in the mirror. And anybody that looks like you that tries to teach you prosperity consciousness and put your money together while y'all all thriving, you kill them and tear them down. And you go to somebody else with white skin, even if they ain't white and they don't look like you because they're in your community. You think they taking time with you and they like you and think you special and bringing you a product that nobody else won't give you. That's also cheap and that's also are poison and generic and don't work that motherfucking good. Let me tell you, one reason I started to make skin products because I had a lot of surgical scars and stretch marks and uneven skin. And I'm one of them so-called black people, people of color. I, ca I can't be in the sun long because it'll start to burn me and I get patches. I don't get, un I don't get even tan patches. Black neck, black ne knees, black ass, cheek if it's exposed, black elbows, black fingers, knuckles, hands. And then I've heard people try to say, oh, don't listen to her because she's a bleacher. That's fine, bitch. I'll be a bleacher all day, bitch, for I walk around looking like a spotted damn chest, a Cheeto damn leopard. So if you don't want to like, you didn't like me anyway, because most black people are so-called that are labeled with a false name and that are, they don't, they don't know that a lot of them are royalty and indigenous, they hate themselves any fucking way. So if I even it out and I peel that fucking nasty looking shit off of me, 
and had chocolate bear claw looking stretch marks in the middle of my titties and all over my stomach, my ass, the back of my kneecap and leg and shit. People like that. You see, black people like that because they black. There's no such thing as a black person because nobody's skin. It might be dark, different hues of brown, but black, that's nothingness. That's death. So because they have a black mind, a nigger mind, a nigger mentality, they have a death mentality. So they're going to speak death on you. So anytime you look like death, you fucked up, you got scars every fucking well, they're going to laugh and crack jokes about that. Anytime I fucking peel it off and find a solution to peel it off, oh, you're a bleacher and you help you hate yourself. Bitch, I don't hate myself. I don't want to be white or nothing else, but I want to be goddamn dynamite and look all right when I goddamn take my clothes off, bitch, or when I show you the titty and I show you the stomach and I lift my leg up, goddamn it, whether it's for a picture, for a nigga in the pool or just shooting this shit, chilling outside. And then these people tell your son is your friend and you don't need to use sunscreen because you black. But a lot of black people that you might know of, not know of, get skin cancer too. You just don't want to rece research it because you said that's a lie that doesn't happen to you. Because you identified as black death. Okay. That's a lot of black people also like me. I've seen people darker than me, five times darker than me. Cannot be in the sun. Even that sun hitting your windshield when you're driving because that sun burned their skin. Feel like it's burning up. It's on fire. And so they have to go to the doctor to get special treatment. They have to cover. Like I have to cover. Through all this water, chemicals and shit you don't know about, probably. Altering us, making us allergic to, to natural things. But then that sun is death. People tell you that sun is good. There are two suns. <laughs> and there's more than one moon and more than one earth. So that sun is now killing black people. Taking you to death since your name death anyway. That sun is not your friend. I, I can't stand in it. The time I stood in it was like last Saturday when I talked to my landlord and I put a white towel over my face and I didn't use no sunscreen and I didn't want to come in the house because the pleasure of it. And I didn't have many clothes on. I had no draw, no bra on and my body is just soaking in it. And I loved it like I loved it as a child, but I had to cut it and remember, get your ass out of this because this sun is also deadly with the toxins and they've removed the protection shield from the earth and they're shooting it down and shooting chemicals in it to destroy it. So now it's become poison to people of color. You never wondered why black people don't like each other. They'll destroy another black person's business. Another black woman will destroy a black woman's business and take her life and her man and her prosperity will go in that store. And I've seen beauty supply stores, black beauty supply stores that are destroyed by black people. But then an Asian or anybody else that comes sell it to you, you love them because their skin is white and you hate yours. And you think they like you and doing you a favor. But them skin products and I used to go get them cream to try to fade these stretch marks and fade them dark marks and little girl tomboy scars and shit I had. And the shit never fucking worked. And you go in and then they tell you, oh, you have to keep buying. You have to keep trying, try. It worked over time. But I said, but why your skin so creamy and pretty? You use it. Okay, and start hitting on the typewriter real damn hard and the calculator to tally up your damn fee and get your fucking ass out they fade. See, I started looking at the ingredients and shit. That shit is wax and grease and petroleum. A whole bunch of toxic fillers that don't do nothing. That's why you see them black bitches going in there getting that skin and getting that ambient shit and written that, that shit don't fucking work. And if it do work a little bit, it don't last. Because you take your stinking ass out there in that sun and them fillers and grease and that little bit of light and hydroquinone getting about 2%, 1%. The shit don't do nothing and you keep using it over time and you'll still keep blacking them down back down. So when I started to study the practices of the Asians and the Koreans had some of the baddest skin system in the world. That's, and they use the rice water and eat the sake with rice in it. And they have a skin lightening diet. And you don't catch them sunbathing. Because they hate the blackness and the melanin, the nigger gene within them that they don't tell you that's there. Because if you start going to look at history, you will see that different Asian groups have pygmy looking black people with an Asian face like Brandy. With that Chinese ass face, that salsa face, that Brandy guy and them slanted slitted up ass eyes that look like they go up in her fucking temple. Because there was black Chinese, a few powerful black samurai kings that was cold with that shit. 
and martial arts and they pushed us out of it. Just like they told Bruce Lee they'll kill his ass when he was in LA teaching black people. And our people, martial arts, said this forbidden for them niggas over there. And we're going to kill you if you don't stop. And Bruce Lee wouldn't stop. So he had to fight and was almost died when he sucker punched. Bruce Lee kicked him in the back and broke his fucking back because Bruce Lee is the cold-blooded, one of the cold-blooded masters of the universe who is not racist or prejudiced. I had black friends and he had to recover. And then he wrote some of his books that I look at. Because they don't want to admit that a lot of them have black in them. And they bury that history, but they know. So they'll do everything to suppress it. And they have a natural diet that will suppress the melanin. And they stay out of the sun. And you see them gaiters with the beet, powder, flower, white face. Because they'd rather see that than to see you. Because that secretly is their mother and their father and reflection of the origins of their birth and creation. Hmm? So when I studied them, and I still go in there, and I had a couple of, I think it was a Korean lady. She was cool with me. She brought me a gift from Korea. I was, I was completely surprised. This was like a couple of years ago. I said, oh, my God, you gave this to me. And she said, yes, I was thinking of you. I love you. And so I brought this for you, and she hugged me, kissed me. And I said, well, I thought all of them were racist, and I still go in there and get things from time to time. I've been too sick to go up there and see her. I haven't seen her in a couple of years. I haven't really been out of the house. And I asked about what I just told you, and there was an Asian man, and I said, y'all have some of the coldest skin care in the world. And he laughed. He said, yes, thank you. I said, why you don't sell it in here? Motherfucker put his head down and started calculating my damn total and shit and tried to get me to fuck on. I said, well, can I get it? Uh, I don't know. You know, I have to get, yeah, you know, you don't want to get it to me. That was fine. I found it. It's on YouTube everywhere else. So I started creating my formulas out of it. I don't buy any ambient or anything at the store, you don't believe me, you can Google it and pull up the ingredients now. Go in there, buy your tube and look at it. Sit there and just humor me and take a copy of it and put the shit back on the shelf. This shit's so much full of Vaseline and grease and shit caked up on you. You grease as a motherfucker wearing that bleaching cream trying to even your shit out and, and you buy it forever and you hope and you pray <laughs> and you buy it and buy it and it doesn't work. I know because I was so scarred up. I was desperate to do anything and to try anything. So I don't care about people making fun of me. It doesn't matter. Because I'd rather you make fun of me. And say I'm a bleacher. I hate myself. With the shit off of me. Like it is now. With skin glowing and glistening in this bitch. Then walking around and y'all cracking. Like women used to make fun of me. And I've even had men make fun of me. Then you got to get naked. And let them see you like that. And you look like a motherfucking. Grotesque. Butchered up animal. And you cannot have sex with a man. And be happy. He can't get off. You can't get off. Unless he really loves you, it doesn't matter. But you have to meet a nigga, and then we had to have the talk. Men, other women used to talk about that. We had to have the talk with our nigga. That we really didn't want to leave. We really want to love. See, I'm getting into some grown women shit <laughs> y'all don't know about. But a lot of the women know what I'm talking about. We had to have the talk. Because it's a nigga, you looking pretty, your hair pretty, your face pretty, but your body is flawed and fucked up and butchered all up by a doctor who done cut you wrong. So we had to deal with the fucked up cuts. Where well, the doctors, usually a white doctor, had no concern for, for us and would cut us to get the baby out just to cut us to get the baby out. They didn't give a fuck. They doing their intern shit or they getting their money. They don't give a fuck. So, because you black. You walk around with a baby you love, come out your ass with a baby daddy that done left you and you all alone on welfare and food stuff and trying to figure out how to survive. And then you got butchered up body from stretch marks and surgical scars looking like an animal that's just been cut up in a Frankenstein experiment. Okay. I live that. And the pain of that sent me on the mission that I'm on. I said, I'd be damned if I lay in a casket looking like this before I die. Because black people will discourage you from doing that. Finding a cure, finding a solution, and say you're self-hating, and that it's on you, and if God didn't want it on you, then it would have happened to you, and you're just going to live with that and find a man to love you. Well, the men we were meeting back then wasn't looking for that and loving that. Because it was women that shot babies out their ass and looked like they never fucking had one. And our mothers didn't teach us to do that because they hated us or they saw the beauty in us and they wanted us flawed and disfigured. Mm. Limiting our chances for a lot of things or beauty or in, in the industry 
or men that really loved us. But then it's a lot of egotistical, vain men, especially a lot of men that have money. They want a, a dime piece or arm piece, or they can get you naked and you out in, in public. And it's like, look at my bitch, my bad, my bitch bad, and your bitch. We were, we were uh, no longer eligible for that. We couldn't qualify for that. You see what I'm saying? Because we were in the Frankenstein group. So we would have to talk. We'd get on the phone and talk about this because we would have to attract women that were just like us. And it's like, I know you love me and I've been putting sex off. And y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about. Y'all just probably ain't going to say, you know what I'm talking about, God damn it. I just want to have lunch with you because I really like you. We've been kissing and we might, I might let you finger me. I might suck you. I might play with you. Let you play with the titties, little parts here and there. So you probably think I'm a, a nigga or something in the sky. I won't let you see the pussy and I won't get completely naked. Um, I had a baby. I'm really up, uptight. I got all these stretch marks on me. So I don't want to shock you and surprise you and turn you off and make you feel like you got that gag and shit and run to the bathroom. What you think was so sexy and beautiful. Now you see all the bug naked. And then you get turned off and you don't want me no more because my body is fucking disfigured. So usually men, when you had to talk to them up front, they really like you. They're not going nowhere. They might see them, rub them, kiss them, and touch them. That's not going to turn me off. I love you. I love your baby. Now I got to know you before we had sex. You put sex off. You told me to talk. We had, I don't give a fuck. And then you set up a meeting with them. Whether you actually sit there and they like, let me see. You take it off. You let the nigga see it most of the time. They stay. Some of them leave because they cannot deal with it. They too young and immature. Their mama and daddy ain't had to talk to them. A real nigga don't leave because you got to start somewhere. But a lot of these immature guys, young and immature and ego egotistical, they leave. So many of us were in that category. I don't want to stay in that category. So I found a way to graduate up out of it and through the pain of it. A lot of you women know what I'm saying and a lot of you don't since it didn't happen to you. To even have to go to use the bathroom and have to take a bath and take your clothes off and have to, I had to turn the lights off because I would bust out crying. And my son was 12 years old when I started to, 12, 13, when I started to find the solutions because I have to dig and find them because they won't tell you. They'll sell you these things and have you buy these products, keep hope alive. The people that you love with white skin that don't love you, they'll sell you this shit and sell you a fantasy that will never come true. And you have to live with the horror and the shame and the pain from your own people and everybody else because you have the stretch marks, which came from a place of glory, giving life. But now it has brought death to your skin because that's all a stretch mark is. It's just an area that has no healthy oxygen rich blood flowing through it that is stretched beyond compare. Stretching a rubber band is not lubricated and all that will talk to lubricate and all that skin and have a certain diet like the Asians do to prevent the skin from stretching and tearing. And then the rubber band and the elasticity in the skin stretch, stretch, stretch to the point as the baby's growing and you're not the skin is dry, you're not moisturized and lubricated, you don't have the right diet and the right fluids in your body. It tears and you get stray, yeah or stretch marks, some so deep in the skin that they cannot be removed by any cream you rub on them and they have you buying that shit and they know that they're taking your money and selling your black nigga death filled ass a motherfucking fantasy that will never become reality in the third dimension. And I learned how to reverse it. So now I'm a self-hating devil. Well, I'll stay over here as a devil in this category. It's fine. And it's black motherfuckers saying it to me. Other people don't say that to me. So that's fine. So I wanted to say that to you. That they're taught the same Asian that sells you shit. <laughs> that's why their skin's so pretty and you go to the Asian spa. A lot of black people know about it now. So they, because they are becoming alive. They go to the Asian spa where they'll get you butt naked on a table. And where the elite and the actresses... And the singers, those black people know it, that don't consider themselves black like you. And like Naomi Campbell, is that the model? Why you think her skin so smooth and dark like that and chocolatey? Because she gets those treatments. And they go overseas and they go to white spas and Russians and they get the treatments that I know about that I now offer to black women. While people tell them don't buy it from me and don't use it, but look at me and look at them because they are a reflection of what I used to look like and what not. I was self-hating. you damn right. I looked in the mirror and I hated that. And now I look in the mirror and I smile because I glow. 
and I have no problem being naked with a nigga, although I'm not naked with a nigga, I'm celibate, but I know at any given time and in a moment, I can take the wig off, I can take the weave, weave out, I grow my hair back on my damn head, and I heal my body, I feel like I'm 20 again, because I'm wearing things now I couldn't wear at 20 and 21, because I had my baby, and a doctor gutted me so bad, that I had a seesaw looking asymmetrical cut on my body. My body looked dried up, wrinkled up, and black. That's how my stomach looked it. Different colors on it with a real thick, deep cut on me that looked like I was butchered in war. Instead of a straight bikini cut, this bitch gets up there and cuts me high on one side. And then take it all the way fucking across my stomach horizontally so it looked just like two children get on a seesaw. The weight of one of them drives the seat down to the ground. So she's sitting on the ground and the other one on the other end of the seesaw pole is up in the air. And you got this really deep, wicked looking, brutal asymmetrical scar that I am wearing like a scarlet letter. Literally inhumane the mark this bitch gave me. And I did everything I could and studied everything I could and talked to every race of woman because I knew the secret was not in the black race, the dead race. And if it was, they wasn't telling it to me. Because I found out a group of black women that had studied under other races knew that secret. Or were chemists and had been to school and knew that secret. Or were dermatologists and you know what? They were told not to give it to you. I met black women that were in tears. That thought, well, a white dermatologist won't help me with this scar. And they're saying I'm crazy and there's no solution for you. All the lasers were for white women. All the treatments for freckles because white people use more bleach than black people. And so do Asian. They have the masters of bleaching, which is what I learned from. And they also have the herbs and the diet that is a natural bleacher. Naturally lighten your skin. If you have a certain diet that's natural given to you by God to correct these things. Erase these shames and these pains. So they wouldn't give it to us. So a lot of us would start comparing notes. We had our little group, you know, we had the talks. We would all say, I'm going to go to that black dermatologist. I'm going to that one. And you go to that one. And we're going to come compare notes. We would have our little meetings, our little chats, our little snacks. One thing we learned, there are a lot of self-hating black people, really, that have PhDs and medical degrees that will not give you the solution. If you say, I don't like this uneven skin on me. I don't like the scar and stretch mark on me. Them black Dermatologists will tell you they must be giving it to whites or somebody else. They won't give you the bleach. They won't give you the pill. They won't, because there are pills you can take as well. <laughs> they won't give you the diet list. They won't tell you anything. What they'll tell you, they will do. I'm not giving it to you because you got a mental problem because you want to lighten this skin on you. You want to get this shit off you. You want to be white. And it's like, no, I don't want to be white. They see all the scars on you and they tell you, put your clothes on. I'm not going to give you that because you're self hating. But what I will do is give you a number to a psychiatrist because you got a mental problem. <laughs> Living in this society already gives you a lot of mental problems, psychiatric problems, because the world hates us and everybody's taught to hate us because of our melanin. But it's really not that. It's deeper than that. The spiritual essence of it, the nine ether hair, and the secrets of them knowing who you are and not wanting you to rise just like you got your dead coming up out of these lakes and rivers and oceans that they flooded your city and these people died alive. You need to do your research, baby. Because you're walking around and you don't know who you are and the power of who you are. And that you can heal yourself and do the magic. The same magic that this world is doing on you. That goes back to what I said about the money. Why do you spend your money? You hate to spend it with somebody who look like you. You're told not to support them. You'll destroy them. Well, I ain't going to go to her nail shop. I'm going to have my own black nail shop. Fuck that bitch. I ain't going to give that bitch no money. Let her get ahead of me. Y'all will go in a beauty supply store. I've seen black people do it. A black woman, a black man with her children running the store. 
they get so jealous first because they don't have no good man that married them and pulled their money together and had resources and source um resources and money and wealth with them they don't like their children because the children are beautiful and the mom and dad is there with the children the children stocking the shelf and they black so black people are coming there refuse to buy and steal shit and try to destroy it but then you go to an asian shop and kiki and he he now i have no problem dealing with other races i'm not saying don't go to them because i go sometimes because it's hard to find the black shops and i don't see them around here because black people don't want black people to have them <laughs> black people don't black women hate each other so much they compete with each other because they hate each other and they feel like you're inferior because they feel like they're inferior. So they can't compete with another woman and black men usually don't want black women. They want something outside of that. So they feel like you're nothing and everybody tells you you're nothing and nobody, especially if you're a certain darker complexion, black woman. So, and your hair has a certain texture. So they, the black men don't want us. They don't want to do business with us. They don't want to give us no money. They give us dick and leave. Nobody else wants us. You don't want yourself. You don't want anybody to look like you. So the the dollar, that one dollar bill I told you to have the web on it and then curse on it, when the insert beast of spider, the black widow that turn on you and make you turn on yourself, she, he, it's on the dollar. There's a curse on the dollar. So why you think you're taught not to keep it? See, I remember we uh, passed schools and all these black restaurants they used to have here, black bank, black funeral home, black stoves and financing. It was a very powerful black network and black businesses and black restaurants and black grocery stores that black people used to go to down here. But a lot of them were also part of the boule. So they would look at blacks as animals too. Unless you would, and went to Spelman, Mo House, um, you gay, bisexual, which they do with them black boule rings, fucking suck each other and take the old Alpha Kappa Delta, Delta, Delta goddamn, uh, whatever goddamn name they got for these sorority, sororities and goddamn fraternity. You not in that shit, and you black, and you not a part of boule, or you don't have a certain bloodline, a mixed birth bloodline, a mulatto, quadruple, octruple, biracial, goddamn binary, whatever the fuck it is. You ain't going in there, goddamn it. But they'll let you eat over there. At least with black owned businesses. That's gone. Destroyed that. Now they doing segregation. Black people made more money and circulated their money within their neighborhood before they go anywhere else because white folks didn't want it. And they didn't want your ass over there. They didn't want you eating over there, fucking and sucking. But then they would sneak and get them some black pussy and black dick and they act like they don't fucking know you. See? Once desegregation came in, that's when a lot of that fell because that's what black people wanted. Black people wanted to shop in white stores and wanted to eat white food. Even they go in there and dig in their ass and stir their finger around in your gravy or spit in your fucking sandwich. They didn't give a fuck. They wanted that white spit and that white doo-doo in their motherfucking soup and goddamn uh, anything brown, goddamn it, and they rich brown gravy and shit on their fucking table, see. They wanted that too, too, so much and were so self-hating. Anything that looked like them or lived like them, they wanted to get away from the blackness. So the economic system fell. And it's still like that now, unfortunately, even though a lot of black people don't feel that way and they're bringing it back. That dollar is cursed for you. And you're not doing any counter manage, manage, magic to balance it and have your own currency because Moors had their own currency and their own face, just like they want to put Harriet Tubman on one of the American bills. And they didn't want that. They voted that down because it might trigger your subconscious and the Moorish science of it to remember that the dollar originally in the world originally belonged to you or your ancestors and your face, a black face. Mm. What's on your own currency? Like every country and every race has their own currency and people that look like them on their own currency, but you have none. Like death, like you don't exist. Blackness, a black hole which is really the most powerful hole in the galaxy, in the universe, to come out of a black hole, which would be a black feminine, female hole. Hmm? So you don't wonder why all the time you call your God and Jesus is my husband, Jesus is my friend. And again, I'm not speaking against that. You, you, you don't like it. Your black motherfuckers don't like it when I say it. And uh, I'm speaking against religion and making fun of it. Maybe I grew up in a black church. I came from down south. My mother's a preacher. My family's full of preachers, seers, teachers, evangelists. But I've seen them do black magic and a lot of satanic shit. 
but they'll call Jesus and shout up in the pulpit and put you under the gospel, which is a God spell, a spell <laughs> to give you the wicked money and to take the wicked dead money out of your pocket with the dead men on the front of them with the code, the Da Vinci code, the Masonic code on the back to put you under a spell to keep you broke, impoverished, separated, segregated, and self-hated while you think you are blending in with the masses and you are accepted for you do anything to be with them, be around them, lay with them, and suck them. And when I say that, I'm not talking about white people because you sucking off a black man that have these, this fake wealth and sucking a ding-ding, swallowing they see man that don't consider they self a part of you and really fucks with you like that and will give their money to their mother and their father. See, you have to understand. All these people so-called came out of the womb of a womb man and a black man. No mother that suckled them off their titty. You are not their mother and father when it comes to the currency of the dead presidents that lay in your hand on that fucking dollar dollar bill, y'all. Their mother and their father that conceived that debauchery to trick you and sell it to you and make you always give it back to them and buy it from them. That is the father of lies and that is their father and their mother that made them rich, fake rich. The father of the earth, the mother of the earth, the queen of the south, the demonic mermaid spirit that lives in the ocean and comes out of the ocean. Do you see what I'm trying to fucking tell you? The dead man that's also the dead satanic the satanic powerful mermaid over the earth that gives you the fake money and said that you a dead black nigga is now coming off of your ancestors that are dead in the lake, river, water, and ocean that you're drinking out of that is feeding you death. Your ancestors that lives in the water that was flooded to death to cover up the fact that you are God. And that you were already here, living on your land, your property, your oil, your gold reservoir that was pumping gold in Oklahoma and all over the United States where black men and black women ruled black gold, which was oil and gold. And they were mining for it and killed your ancestors that ran and ruled it like Queen Khalifa in California that Nipsey brought in here to me. That it was stolen from you, buried underwater. Now they are rising up, trying to speak to you, walking the earth again, coming to your house, trying to wake your motherfucking ass up. But now they are co-mingled with the demonic entities of the water that are holding them back and trading the souls and selling their souls. And it was black motherfuckers that helped bury your ancestors under the lakes rivers and waters at well that now sold they sold and have bargained to keep you in bondage and kill you and siphon off of you and feed off of you because you don't know what is in the water and the water you drinking has dead people in it dead tissues in it DNA genetic codes in it you think I'm lying someone because I don't care about people making fun of me and saying I'm a fake psychic. I'm crazy. I don't care. Eat my ass while the sun is rising on Sunday morning, goddammit. And for the cold damn crow, damn cock, and the damn rooster cock a doodle do, bitch, before noontime and you eat your noontime sandwich, eat my ass. Somebody that listens to me, that doesn't think I'm crazy, and even if they thought I was crazy, they don't now, sent me an article, goddammit, yesterday, coming out of Atlanta, ATL, the dirty South, shouted. The CDC 
I think they were speaking about the CDC gathering this information and other doctors, scientists gathering this in the water system. Guess what? Uh, they have found DNA. They know the DNA is naturally going to come in the water. And they found that thing that I cannot say. That thing is at a high rate in the water supply in the ATL. Shout it, shout it. High levels of it. I don't think it's all over the state of Georgia, but it has popped up and said hello to me. I told y'all that it was. See, that's I'm a, all I can say. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> While we're talking, you think I'm lying? Google me, bitch. Google me, bitch. Google what I just said to you, because I've been telling y'all now, warning y'all that this is the Chinese year, the tiger, the water tiger, and everything, and all catastrophes, tsunamis, earthquake, hurricane, volcano eruptions will be connected to and triggered by water. And check Florida, and the water in Florida, and the aquatic life, fish, lobster, scrimp, you know, not shrimp, scrimp and crab meat and stuff that come up out that ocean, because that, that oil spill, was it Chevron a few years ago? They're still suffering from that, and the same... Lord, you know. Okay, that thing that we talking about that I said also showed its presence real high in the ATL and the CDC is de dealing with it. It's in the water supply. That thing I can't say. <laughs> it's a worm, a hydro worm. That's also a hybrid that was made in outer space in the, in the uh, labs up there. This is a genetic hybrid mixed with human and pig and sheep and HIV. It's tied into that thing <laughs> that I cannot say. That then just showed up in the water in Atlanta. The genetic strains of that, they are mixing it with that thing. That I can't say the name. Or they'll put me in jail and try to run me insane. Put me in Facebook jail like they don't put me in YouTube jail. <laughs> and they are mixing that to create another species up there to bind with certain human DNA and reverse RNA transcript <sighs> transcriptase. They are making it go into the RNA because the RNA will will be retroactive, huh? And it will go on a printing copy spree and print out millions of copies of itself mixed with your RNA and attack your DNA. That's more than two strands. They're lying about that double helix. Nipsey and Dr. Sabi showed me there's a whole nother set we don't know about, the God gene, <laughs> that they don't want to wake up in you, but they move through it while you're sleeping, because they know what it is. Mm. The magic of it. See. And you're going to see humans attack each other, bite each other when they're attacking. So they're just fighting with your feet and, and feet and legs. <laughs> they're going to be fighting with their teepees. Like a rabies. Some of these, oh Lord. Some of these humans got rabies type of uh, uh, things in them like a dog or like a wild wolf or something because a lot of them is sleeping with these animals and they butt sleep with dogs and they butt see hmm you got a lot of black women hmm? black men Peter if they love her they screwing these dogs in the ass and mouth. You hear me? Some of these dogs and shit, especially these big old dogs, watch it. These women like to carry these Great Danes and big old hybrid dogs with them. And then I've been in the car one time coming up to the red light. A black lady came up with a big old dog, bigger than her. Sitting up there like it's her man up there with a damn car seat on and shit and a fucking... Seat belt, nigga sitting up straight up like a fucking man. 
we just looking around. We didn't mean no harm looked in the window. Like sometimes you just look and you got to sit there a long time, look at somebody in their car. That dog started barking at us so bad, like it was finna come through the glass. I said, that's her man. She fucking him. And the lady gonna start, the lady that was driving us around, bust our last time dead ass since she fucking him because he's too aggressive. He's too a violent. I can tell it's a male. She's sitting there smiling like that shit cute. Like, saying, my man don't play by me. You see, my husband don't play that shit. You better not look at me, bitch. We weren't even looking at this hoe. We was looking at her, looking at the car. Just kind of looking around like you do. A guy told me that uh, it was a teacher working at this school. She was married. Her husband would be out of town. There's porn with black women too, sucking a little dog thing. That people are, oh, black people wouldn't do that. Oh, black people don't kill, they sell. Oh, black people don't go to a psychiatry. Oh, black people don't take psychiatry med. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. A lot of them blow their fucking head off. Especially right now, a lot of them rape children. A lot of them hate themselves. A lot of them got mental problems. A lot of them on psychic meds. And they go to the psychiatrist. If they can't get to them that week and they start freaking out and breaking down, they call in some meds so they can, you know, they motherfucking, um, Xanax and they motherfucking hair on derivative and they own dope uh but they secretly do the shit and you know it's a dope medication because the bitch man fucked up see what i'm saying but like i said hey these are bedtime stories i'm telling y'all so the black lady was a teacher at a school her husband went out of town a lot they had a dog to protect her she has a dog in the basement the man came home one day and caught her he didn't know she didn't know he was coming in out of town she was butt naked coming down the step with peanut butter all over her body and peanut butter and her stinking ass up in her pussy. And the dog would get excited. That was her other lover to hold her tight and keep her warm at night and make her calm in her ass. It was so sweet. Such a choosy lover. Like the eyes of brother said, a tender, kind, compassionate lover. She go up there and feed him his apple with that meat and, and warm that food up and have grave over and cook that dog all kind of steak meals and get him only the gourmet. <laughs> only the gourmet dog food, even if it was crunchy like and dry, make sure it have a real gravy and seasoning on it. He go down there and season her up in her ass with all kind of dog dick and eat her pussy and lick all the peanut. That was his favorite flavor of peanut butter. Eat the peanut butter off of her ass and then fuck her out. Oh my God, I'm about to vomit. Other people know it and was whispering about it, but this nigga didn't know it. He caught her in the act with her other man. You know, a bossed up nigga, you know, that roof roof and got a whole bunch of teeth in his mouth. So he takes a nigga down for this bitch. You know, that's her lover. I don't know. They She wanted to marry the thing. But I don't know if they can get ring and shit to fit or have a dog wedding. You know what I'm saying? That that's blasphemy. No, no human would speak to her really. That really wasn't in that shit. Hmm? I seen some porn. I could not believe it. It was this married couple. They was on the internet. I I, I didn't want to look at it no more. They had a small puppy, a small dog, and they was filming the dog. The man was talking. The lady was too much in pleasure. The dog, they put some kind of food or flavor or something on her pussy. The dog was laying down there with her legs gap. He eating out her pussy. And the dog said, the man said, look at him. He can't even hardly eat. He got his mouth full. He loved her pussy eating it. Let me tell you something. This is also a form of necromancy and black magic. Hmm. Because a woman will have a sex with a dog. Get the feces, the blood, the semen, and everything from it. Mix it together. Do different rituals and spells, bestiality, and will kill you with it. Why do you think some of these dogs will tear a mailman up or anybody up that's coming to the house? And you don't know why this dog attacked you like this. And why you're in the house and all of a sudden a dog will attack you about the owner? Because there becomes a genetic link, a telepathic link, a psychological link, so that they can sick that motherfucker on you without even opening their mouth. And they sitting there having coffee and shit with you. 
But the bitch really don't fucking like you anyway. I think you fucked a man or the nigga wanna fuck you or something. Y'all think I'm lying and I ain't gonna worry about it. And all of a sudden, out of everybody in the room, the dog attacks you. The woman is coming off of it because this she can sick this motherfucker spiritually and telepathically done rituals on the dog, see, and caught a particular entity, a familiar that hang around that'll do shit and sick the motherfucker on. And you wonder why this dog did that shit to me? Why this dog don't like me? Cause the owner don't like you. See, that's why I don't play with people dogs where I know the person don't like me and I hate them. Just like I told you that bitch next door, sick that dog on me. Open that door. That dog wanted me. And the dog had started telling me I'm going to whoop my ass and shit. She's standing out there on the sidewalk. I'm on my sidewalk. We're right beside each other. She's talking to someone else, not me. Not even looking at me. And all of a sudden, the dog standing in front of her and push his chest out. Poke his chest out and push his shoulders back. Strut over to me on the sidewalk. Look up at me. And this lady is looking at this dog do this to me. And won't tell him, moop, moop, come here. Stop it. Look up at me and growl and show his teeth is on the side and let me know that he's finna get in my ass soon, goddammit. Then after he do that, turn with his head up like he bout somebody and walk back over to the bitch and look at me while he got his leg and shit and rubbed up under her. You know this bitch gonna look and grin and keep on talking and then say nothing. So I know I had to get, get goddammit, got some for him, goddammit. I had to be on alert because he kept doing this shit and she stands right there and let it her nigga walks by like he don't see it mm -hmm. i'll see you later when i get off work and they letting this dog motherfucking threaten me put death threat on me and i can read and pick up on animals like i said the rats start running to me want to sit up under me up there they, they 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 attracted to me like that i don't fucking know why so i i, I said i better get ready this dog is going to attack me. I can feel it. And I started telling people, and they bust down there. Like, she's so crazy. I said, no, I'm serious. That dog is going to whoop my ass. She told him to do it because she don't like me. And the dog tried it. Came on me, and it was what I feared because I knew I could read the dog's mind, and I could read her mind. It was linked to her. She had programmed and talked about me and told that dog, why do you think racist white people and racist police they would have the German Shepherds and, and in segregation with Martin Luther King and the hoses, hose black people down like dogs. And then the German Shepherds and whatever other dog they had would go bite black people and take chunks out of them while the police and white people sitting around cheering it on laughing. Hmm? Why do you think a lot of police are so scared of black people? That when they get out of the car or before they get out of the car and they pull them over, they can't even reach for their driver's license. They shoot them because they're scared of them because they told all black people are animals and they kill you and they don't. Because it was revealed a few years ago on the news, somebody white told that the police is in there, the shooting range have pictures of black people. Like they're going hunting for wild melon picnics and shoot and lynch black people for their children and they family to see and laugh. They shoot at black people at the shooting range. The police just do so. What do you think? They're subliminally so charged up, so geeked up, so hyped that every black person, every person with non-white skin wants to hurt them and kill them and they're an animal. So what do we do to you? We shoot you like we do with hollow points at the shooting range. So when they see you, before you can talk, and you mean no harm. You're educated and you're rich. You're wealthy in an expensive car. Your ass will get shot too because you're a nigger. Let somebody stop them in time and they feel that we see this. You're the enemy. You're the nigger. And they, that is a form of, excuse me, necromancy. You're doing a death spell on the person because you showed their face. You showed the color of their skin. You showed their features. You're taught to hate them. You're bringing their entity up and you're putting death on their head. Mm. So they become overwhelmed with the spirit. Overwhelmed with the familiar that likes to eat the flesh and blood of black people. The melanin, the human, the blue man, the blue black man, the green man. And they will show you as a 
Indian God or certain Asian God. They blue and they fucking green. You know what that is. Blue magic, goddammit. The melanin man. The melanin God King. The monkey king. That they laugh as a monkey, but that monkey king, you call it a killer motherfucker about you. That's a black person they call a monkey. That is a very human, a very powerful God. If you want to say it. And you know it's got to be because when they see you, they walk by you and turn their motherfucking head. Unless they're taking your money. Selling you some false shit. And a wig with lice and roaches and shit. And all of them don't do that. I'm not saying that because I bought them. It's just hard to get them from, from black, so-called black people. Because they, they want you out of it. And I've seen black people cry. I've seen this black lady from Jamaica in a black beauty supply store here. And she tried to buy wigs and hair and products when they know she black. They tell her they don't have it or they object the price up so high because they have an Asian network and a group, a networking group that they put their money in a pot and they buy from each other. And so some Asian people that are not prejudiced and racist, they've actually had to order some things for black people to get them because they won't sell it to them because they don't. They'll have you buy their stuff. But you can't sell it to nobody and have your own because they'll destroy you in your own neighborhood. You know, I've talked to people that had black beauty supply and have black people that go over there and laugh and talk with the Asians and then go look, have the black people go look through a black person, beauty supply store and what they got and what they, they sell and what the price. Oh, and then go back over there and the black person will tell them, the black people got their beauty supply store over there. They laugh and talk to me because I'm black. But uh, they selling this for two ninety nine, dollars And they selling that for five ninety nine. dollars Asian person going now and mark it down to two forty nine. dollars We got a sale today. $5.98, god damn it. Mark it down one fucking penny. All the niggas go over there and buy that. Come out the black folks store. Knowing they supposed to help black and buy black. I'm sorry, but it was like a penny off the day. It was about five cents short than yours. Knowing that if the black person keep going down on it, they're going to go out of business because they don't have a monopoly on beauty supply, black hair and shit like that. And they don't have black people that's going to invest in them, the whole community, invest a dollar in them. Thousand people, thousand dollars, hundred thousand dollars. Dollar letter, hundred thousand people, hundred thousand dollars. You got a hundred thousand people, give you a dollar. You see what I'm saying? They go get that dollar to them because they said you sell it for a dollar, uh, one oh five, and the Chinese people put a sale on sell it for ninety nine cents. So we, and you know they got that penny cup at that up there at that cash register. So if that's one ninety nine or ninety nine cent, they put the tax on it, and it become one oh five. You got one oh four. You don't take no penny out that cup. They'll beat your ass in now, cause you didn't get them that damn penny. Kick you and slap you, call you all kind of black nigga, bitch. Whoop your ass. There's been a lot of black people been whooped by the Asian in the Chinese beauty supply store. Kick them like they a damn dog. Just kick the black woman. Think up there in North Carolina, South Carolina a couple of years ago. They done hushed that up and called the NAACP Chinese man with some thick ass glasses on. Bending his head, talking about he fucking siren. But somebody taped it. You went siren when you was hitting that black woman in her face with your fists. Took your foot Kicking that fucking lady, just feet and legs on that damn black ass lady, knock that lady down. Mm. And she got a bag full because they said she stole something and she did it. She had to receive in her hand. They had just rung her up and said she took some extra shit or some of the extra nappy hair that they had in that bag. The lady did, and she showed him her bag, and he still proceeded to beat that lady monkey ass. God damn it! Called the police. She hopping. I think the lady, they talking about, I want to forgive. And he told me he's sorry, gave the money back. And hmm. you see what I'm saying? Because of your ancestors in the water that you don't know about, that's flooded in there. You don't know yourself and you hate yourself. And they're trying to wake your get, goddamn ass up and sell, sell to each other instead of buying from somebody else. Or sell to each other and buy from somebody else if you want to. I'm not telling you not, don't buy from anybody else, but you take all of your money. Because it's a curse on you. And it's a curse on the dollar. And there's double speak on the dollar. So they're telling you this is for you. The same opportunities and advances for you. But the money has already been satanically blessed and cursed. 
in day favor, goddammit, and in curse in yours. Why do you think you don't never fucking go nowhere? Why do you think only certain black people get out and live here and live there and them as a whole is fucked up and on dope and raped and exploited? And then they'll take, they they do this shit strategically. They redline a district. Politicians are redline a district and their, their constituents and their the lobbyists that get the money from the big corporations and the powerful people that run politics and control the population will create a certain red line. The niggas go over here. And this area code is for niggas. So when you see this area code, you already know this where it's red line and district off where the niggas at. So you make sure the insurance got a code. So when you try to get insurance, what's your what's your error code? God damn it, what's your tag? I'm not a shit. They already know they put in the computer, oh, this is a nigga. So we're gonna charge the shit five and ten times higher than what we do in a white area. Okay. You wanna buy your car? We already know that that zip code and particular cars, certain niggas like zoop. We're gonna, we're gonna, and we got a secret code. We got the salesman. They don't know it. We finna tell them we getting them a deal. What we getting them is still already fifteen and thirty percent way above what we're gonna sell it to somebody else. Goddamn it! They think they got a deal. We still got their motherfucking ass. Okay. You gonna vote? We already know that we're gonna have these dummy machines over here. We're gonna nigger rig the machine for the nigger. So we go over there. They find to get somebody to believe in them. Even if it's a white person that get in power that believe in them. No, we're going to rig that. We're going to have two votes. They vote yay. Got them to vote nay nay behind their motherfucking back. So, you know, and then said, you know, we got a thousand black folks lined up. You're going to go in there and we're going to get some a thousand dead motherfuckers. So, got them 5,000 dead motherfuckers got here. And we're going to put a ballot for this white motherfucker over here. And these niggas going to lose it. And we're going to say, hey, we done gave you the right to stand your black ass in the line with your pimento cheese and peanut butter sandwich and shit and vote. I hear this hot ass son, so don't get mad at us that your votes wouldn't have got damn enough and your person didn't get in there knowing they snickling and giggling and getting drunk as a motherfucker and fucking some cheering in the background, knowing they don't sot your motherfucking black ass up because you think you is black. You think you is a nigga and you're dead in your mind and you don't want to know how politics go and you don't want to play the game so your ass getting fucked in the ass with the grease and getting played on. You don't want to play, you get played on because it's a game and players play all motherfucking day. Whether you want to admit that shit or not, your ass still getting motherfucking played because it is a demonic and it's a political system. It's a mathematic and sociology and economic system that's stacked up for them to win and your nigga ass to motherfucking lose. That's fine. This shit keep going up and keep going down for you because you don't want to do your work. You don't want to go on assignment. In every region, they have a witch on assignment and a motherfucking COVID on assignment and they minions on assignment that look just like you. They tap into the spirits in the water and the ones in the ground and in the goddamn sky and bring down the necromancy and the power and the money associated with it that you won't fucking do while you over here crying on your knees at the pulpit throwing your last damn dime and they're calling Jesus, goddammit. Hmm. I'm going to get off y'all because I used to be one of you. And I don't subscribe cause that, that shit is there. The same way they created that fake crucifixion and the face Easter Sunday. He rose and then was killed in three days. And they're howling and shit and crying. They are reenacting the spell, the gospel on you in a satanic, masonically ritualized, charged, and blessed church to send your ass back to a nigga death basking in black death thinking you a good person thinking you a righteous person a lot of y'all ain't good because you're sinning against yourself and you're sinning against your children lining them up for more blackness and death telling them to be optimistic while you up there praying to a dead goddamn god that don't exist a damn sissy Laying up down the cross with some damn lipstick on and some long damn spiral curl. Man, that done got it highlighted blonde. And it's several Jesuses. Was it Barnabas Jesus? It's, it's several I come back and get into that shit. 
But uh, it wouldn't even know J in the alphabet. But you calling on this man, crying and hollering, grabbing your ass, talking about comfort you at night because you ain't got no hood money. Jesus is your damn fixer. See, uh, <laughs> let me get off of this bullshit. Hmm? That's right, Iman. They complain black being is charged too much, but they have no resources. They have no low interest or interest-free loan. Like they give these people interest-free grants and loans to come in your community to set up liquor store, beauty supply, restaurants, so they can give that shit to you for $3 for a big old plate. All you can eat for $5. And then you be seeing damn little, little, little damn chow chow in there chopped up, you know, Lord, see, I used to get in trouble for this because I noticed it. I go to certain, certain neighborhood and then restaurant. The cats, even the cats that be drawed up and live where they damn hand be bigger than they damn stomach, stomach caved in, see the cat rib caved. God damn it. I come back tomorrow to get a cat some milk. Garfield be gone. Garfield be missing. About 10 to 15 motherfucking stray cats jumping in and goddamn dumps and shit and the motherfucker don't jump out. And then I see a certain person work at a restaurant walking the area like they strolling, getting some exercise. All the cats rounded up and shit. And I don't see too many little jaws. Dog be missing. All of a sudden they have a sale over there. All you can eat. Chow lo mein, chicken lo mein and shit. And then I used to go get that shit. I was addicted to the Chinese rice and then try to eat on the damn chicken, the meat on there. And it's real like a rubber band, real rubbery and strangy like. And I couldn't chew it down. I'm chewing like a motherfucker on one side of my damn mouth. Trying to chew that shit down. The shit don't chew down. String it with some damn... um. I don't know if that's ligament tissue on it, some cartilage tissue on it. Well, you can't break this shit apart. I had to beat that shit apart to get a knife or some seal to cut that meat apart. See, now I know why. See? Now I know what it is. Throwing that meat over there and what they do is chop that meat down but put a whole bunch of real big old onion and real big old peppers and put some real thick sauce sauce and damn gravy over it. So you really can't see the meat up under there. You really can't tell that's not chicken or fucking beef. Oh my God. I hate, I'm about to bump that. That's some rat. Take that rat and take that chow stick and shit. And put your fingers and squeeze it together and put that shit in your mouth. You got all that gravy and onion and bell pepper. You can't see it. So you swallow it down because you can't break. That's, that's, you, that's what I'm talking about right there. That's what I'm talking about because see, that's why they can afford to get to you. You go to them because they real cheap. And the black person can't even afford to do no $3 meal or $5 lunch special. All you can eat and shit. Because they don't have no fucking backup. Because all the dead people, all the black and the nickel people around them won't get them no goddamn money. They'll be smoking crack, drinking liquor on the corner. Doing everything else and giving their money to everybody else. But you, because you think you're better than them. They ain't going to give you nothing to help you. They'd rather see your business fail. Come on over here with the niggas, because you're a nigga just like us. So you don't need to have that. We ain't got it. You don't need to eat it. We don't need to either. Come on, we can, let's put our $3 together. Let's go over here. And we're going to all walk in here as a group and show them that we bought some. We got some money. When y'all taking money from each other. But we're going to show them that we got it, because we want to keep them here, because we think they like us and believe in us, because they got white skin. So we're going to go over here and eat this shit. And not knowing your cat is missing, you've been asking about, have anybody seen Lil Ray Ray? And everybody know that him and 10 other cats is damn missing with Garfield. God damn it. <laughs> Just like that cat, God damn it, on Bewitch. Because all witches have a cat, God damn it. But they didn't have none of that, God damn it, because the cat, they don't scoop their ass up out there by the dump. So when the cat, hey, kitty, 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 want some milk? Want some tuna? They're saying, Ram! This motherfucker missing. You can't, you can't get him, goddammit. Nigga gone, and then you don't know. Yeah, we finna show them. We got $3. We got $5 and shit. We're gonna support them. We're gonna support this business. We're gonna support black business, though. Y'all, now that's your, mm, Pay me that chopped it. Mm, mm. I got a fortune cookie. Only tell everybody to tell you what it said. 
Sipping on your cherry drink. Well, pay me some more of that meat right there with them vegetables. I like them. See, I don't eat vegetables. I'm just a bit. That's Garfield right there, goddammit. Teeth up in the <laughs> cat teeth and that shit. Mm. Oh, goddamn. I'm a bit now. Oh, that, that's a bone. What's this? Oh, that, that's a bone. That way, that, that's a bone. Give it to me. Herp and get that shit. Go back down. Open that shit. Goddamn, that's one of Garfield's teeth. Throw it back down in the trash so your goddamn ass can't fucking see the shit. They done seen you walking with that cat and shit, knowing you love that damn cat. So they got the her up as the sky, and they gonna get that plate to you because you cannibalizing on your shit, helping to complete the goddamn necromancer spell. 360 degree. Took your shit, chop him up back there in that wok with some extra grease on now. Put some seed in the sesame seed oil and shit, and gave you some of that damn rice with that duck sauce, and let it go back 360 degrees to you, and take your nigga money. And send you on your way because you're going to get sick in a minute, god damn it. Because what happened to Garfield, if it happened to your motherfucking ass, completing that cycle and being cha-ching, bringing more money to them. So they go out, and one of my, my ex told me that he noticed he was watching it at the dumpster, god damn it. Seen one of them go over there before they were preparing their Chinese lunch up there and was picking up cats. Whole bunch of fucking cats catching them in them damn <laughs> metal cage. Cats whining and shit. Probably gave them something to eat. They had some drug or poison or something. Go back there. It's this place called P.F. Chang down here. A few years ago, all these black people bragging about that's a, you know, they bought some because they spent a lot of money to go to P.F. Chang at damn Buckhead somewhere. Lord have mercy, they made one of them Chinese employees back there mad. I think made somebody black mad back there, one of mess of mad back there. They went and called the health department. It was all over the Atlanta Journal Constitution. They closed P of Chain because one of the employees told me it was some drawed up rats back there in the damn refrigerator. Had a hawk, some type of damn hawk, a damn bird, or eagle back there in the damn deep freezer with plastic on it couple of dogs and a whole bunch of rats but I guess they like that meat. That meat tangy to them. I guess the way they be eating like that, they, we hawk that damn motherfucking big ass wood rat in my damn attic coming over here to get some of that damn soul food. I was cooking for Nip, goddamn it, and my daddy and King Bond. This nigga, if you see the picture, I ain't never seen no rat look like that. This nigga look like he done went to the barber shop and the goddamn beauty supply. Nigga got blonde highlights in his motherfucking head. Black hair look like they done fucking highlight. Took some of that damn aluminum foil. Took pieces of that red hair and put some. Got that brush, that paint brush, and painted some blonde highlights here. Blonde highlight there with the black mist in it. Like they put some honey gold in the nigga head. Look at the picture you think I'm lying. I re-put it up on Facebook. Nigga got real blonde highlight in the front of his head like a bitch. Put the highlight round his eye and his ear. Just head, just sparkling and glistening the number one stunner what 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 the number one stunner boom ba, boom boom because i ain't never seen no rap with no blonde highlight in his head but the nigga in my house had that shit on and like they put some grease on his head slick that down and he just looking shiny teeth clean like you know put some colgate crest script on now teeth white filed down even i guess from knowing that basement downstairs that that condo they got down to that apartment in my living room Cut that old man shit. So this nigga looking good, so fresh and so clean, clean. Don't nobody stuff at me. I just so fresh, so fresh and so clean. Yeah, this nigga's sharp. Nigga's toenails. He didn't have no nasty hooked over toenail. Toenail, fingernail clean. When we took that picture of his ass, dead up there in that goddamn rat trap. That shit really vexed my spirit. That shit hurt me. I didn't know what to do. I mean, I felt like throwing up, seeing that there's something that big. Eating my food coming over here, but the nigga was clean. Look like somebody's goddamn pet, but hell, I guess he was my damn pet. You know what I'm saying? Done it like he wanna. Brought all his family and friends. Family and friends invited them to come up out the damn woods and out the creek and out the sewer next door. So they could meet over here and have a goddamn nightcap and some fucking snacks. I'm gonna make damn soul food and eat out of my nigga's China. God damn it. 
Well, I guess they, they liked it red a lot. I guess they really liked it. Him, them sides right there, fit, fight, fight them up and slice them down. Shit. So when they got wind of it, they must have wanted to get their ass back. They put on the health department. The shit was all over the motherfucking news. And P.F. Chang had to close down. I, I Google it if I'm getting the name right, goddammit. I don't know if they reopened the motherfucker, but um, they shut that down. And all these black people running around here hollering and screaming and want to gag and vomit and shit. Oh, I ate some rat and a, two cats and a goddamn hawk and a goddamn buzzard and an eagle. They might, I think they might have had a vulture in that motherfucker. They got out in the desert, goddammit. He was in there with his mouth cocked open, froze like a motherfucker with some plastic wrapped around his ass and shit. They finna pull his hair out of his head and saute him. God damn it. There's rituals to these things. Why you think you go in there? They had a god right there and Buddha with the incense and shit, hitting you at the door with the money and the fruit and cheese and egg and shit laid over in his motherfucking altar right there. To mesmerize your stinking ass and mesmerize your money out your pocket with them other dead niggas that you got walking around and don't like they stuff, they get their money away. That's why black people be selling their shit higher because they can't make a living because they have no foundation but a coffin full of dead niggas in it. Hmm. Giving their wealth away. Coming up out the water. Y'all better start listening at your visions and your dreams and your impulses and intuition because your dead are at this water where they buried them and they're walking around. Hanging in people's yard, hanging in the bushes and shit, coming in your house, you think you feel and hear somebody walk by, and no, that ain't, that's that's me. That's a ghost and shit. I don't believe in that shit. I plead the blood of Jesus on my house. Motherfucker still coming through that shit that ought to tell you something because that Jesus you calling ain't real and don't give a fuck about you. And they're trying to let you know and they're opening the old Dead Sea Scrolls and the old books of life, books of knowledge, and books of death. And we are in the book of death. Because that's what they give you. And that sermon they're giving you is full of death. And you will not let your ancestors give you the book of life. They're giving you the Necrocomicon. They are feasting off of you and they're on top. And you are being consumed and you're on the bottom. Rotting with worms in your fucking brain. Drinking the water. Google this, because you know, I y'all like to say I ain't got good sense. Look at the water, and look at the water storms, and the catastrophe that is about to come. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. I have digressed. I was supposed to give you some of Nipsey's message. This one that I'm giving you is what Dr. Sabi and Nipsey has told me that I have gotten in trouble for trying to tell you. But I don't know how else to get it to you. I guess I'll have to start taping these things, putting them on my website. Because the two videos, the last ones that I did are on my website. Because they took the Dr. Sabi King Nipsey Hustle reading off of my page and suspended me for what I had said. So we'll have to take this down today too before they do something to me over here. They like to do that. And I'm used to it. I'm here for it, bitch. I'm still going to tell the people what I'm supposed to tell y'all. Let me tell y'all something Nipsey started to tell me. I've had a migraine, so I just woke up like I told y'all. Nipsey told me about his sister, Samantha. He talks again about his sister, Samantha, and how she's under the spell of Karen Civil, Lauren London, Queen Afua, Supernova, and he said a high-ranking blood gang member that she bows down to or used to screw or maybe screwing now or call herself in love with. That's what he said about Samantha. He told me they have Samantha under a spell. All of them are under spells. They're using necromancy and black magic to try to summon Nipsey's soul back into Samantha. They don't like him talking to me. And passing messages to me and revealing them. So they want to, they're trying to do black magic on me and kill me. They've been doing it all this time. I see it and I hear it. They think I don't know. I even heard his baby's mother say before my address was released when she was telling Nipsey to stop giving me messages, 
stop embarrassing her and come back to California and cut this shit out. He said, I'm not going to because you set me up. I thought I was in love with you and you pretended to be in love with me, but you really pretended to steal my money and kill me, set me up and kill me. I know you're a part of it and I'm not going to be with you anymore. She said, well, you can still be my man and be my lover. He said, I don't want to be because you're the one that led to my demise and I was the one you secretly despised. See, just like she got up there the other day on, on Instagram, my king, my love, I love you, I miss you, my man, we have the same DNA, I always love you. You have his DNA now because y'all killed him and you carrying it around to try to reduce your karma. To try to reverse your karma for what you've done. This is what Nipsey told me. I told y'all, all social liberty murders and killings and robberies are inside jobs. They're all scams and tricks before your eyes. The devil in disguise. And you think somebody, oh, snuck his chain and bust his nose and robbed him and better get his chain back and how they do that and shot him. That's all inside industry shit with sissies fighting each other. They're just two sissies. You think a real nigga gonna let a nigga come up and bust your nose and break your nose and snatch your chain off and start running? Soldier boy, tell them. Sissies. Following the script to keep y'all engaged and entertained and false news and comics and keep you off the real shit you need to be studying and fucking preparing for. Nipsey explained it to me like this. Different, they make them kill each other and make them have gladiator fights and cheer on the fights to the death and the bloodletting and then whoever kills the other must consume their flesh and drink their blood. And they all party and cheer on death and destroy and hate and despise its life. Nipsey said a celebrity will be jealous of another celebrity. A woman will get closer, like this woman here, the actress that did this to Nipsey. Want they life, want they money, a setup bitch. So they sick this motherfucking bitch and other bitches on different celebrities to so be their handlers, fuck them, do sex magic on them, have sex curses in their ass, beautiful corpses, the beautiful dead people. I'll have to touch you with my ooey. They friends. They're actress and them, they friend, they and they under a fool. They they do this shit together. Okay. Set a nigga up. So when he fucked them, the spell gets on his dick and go go to his body. Now he's walking around cursed, numb dick you're living but dead internally at the same time. That's what Nipsey said. They will consume the flesh of the person by consuming the mind and putting them under demonic, demonic record contracts. Music deals. The demons are also on the contract. And they look like, he, he showed it to me. He said, like the web on a dollar bill. Once you sign that contract, the tentacles and the webs come out and start to wrap up and compose and wrap themselves around the human being and the aura of the being. Going to the mind, the heart, and the soul. And the demon will rest inside of the central nervous system. Walk and talk around them. All the drugs, all the food, all the alcohol they have will be contaminated by the God spell. The God spell. The God of the world, the God of the tree of life, of the tree of knowledge, that is good and evil. Lucifer, the light that brings you light and brings you darkness at the same time. The contradictor, the conundrum that you cannot see, the double speak, the double talk. Speak life on you, but also speaking death on you, cursing you, pulling your blessing out on through they pussy, through sucking they dick having business babies by them to get into the contract and the murder by numbers. And what they do, they deal with a voodoo priest or Ifa priest that say, I want to take the life of Nipsey Hussle. I want to get his money, his things. I've had a baby by him. I've gotten into his business. His manager's helping me. She's doing the same thing. They're all into the occult business of necromancy, corporate necromancy. Dance with me. I suck your dick and let you come in me and have your baby for the sake of corporate necromancy. Count Dracula. Hmm? You think that's just a character they put on your baby's cereal? They pimping them and vampiring off them, killing them with sugar, sugar and drugs that you willingly buy death for your babies with all these cartoon characters that are clearly blood suckers. Murderous, <laughs> and you buy it on the cereal box. I want to drink your blood, and you think it's funny. Okay, just what these people are doing. He said, 
and they put a spell on them with that away. Oh, I hypnotize you with this pussy. <laughs> I'm fly nigga, you know you wants to fuck me. <laughs> yeah. They do them, whatever your vice is, which is a natural man's vice to love beautiful women. And they tell the voodoo priest, I want you to help me kill this person. But I want you to cloak me with magic. So I am, a, am invisible to them. They cannot see that I'm a blood sucker and I work under Count Dracula. Count Blackula. And I'm going to set him up, get everything I want and line it up. And his manager going to help me get in his pocket like they did with Mac Miller. Do sperm and calm. Blowing bubbles with like it's bubble yum, gum gum. Uh, yeah. I'm going to make him think I do anything. I'll be anything. I'll be anything and everything you want me to be. I'm in love with you because I know you're in love with me. And I'm the trick they set you up to see. To be a, get a business, baby, and get your corporate checks for all of eternity. While you lay rotting in your motherfucking grave. Because I'm a, a dick-sucking trick, bitch, and a sex slave. Help me with this. So they do the voodoo spell. I'll pay you for it. And then I want you to do a spell to block out my karma. For murder by numbers. So they kill Nipsey with sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And did the tootsie roll through her mouth, pussy, and booty hole. Soul of soul. For go. <laughs> so now, he says, she's doing a lot of black magic with her handlers and her teachers. This lady's not even human no more. She looks human and a cute actress with big dimples. But she's not human. She's black on the inside. Sold her soul empty. But what really is death is a white wall. When you see walls painted white and you see Entity Snow White and they're wearing white clothes for white parties, it's really representing death. Lucifer, the son of the morning, I will chase you out of the earth. That is death. White is death, not black. Come as an angel of light, but really it's an angel of death. Wrapped in white, with white wings, the vampiric bat sings. So she's doing the magic because the voodoo priest, the Ephah priest makes this deal with them. You will not have to deal with the karma of having this come back on you and having people find out what you really did. So we're going to do all these death spells. We're going to kill him. You're going to get the money for the baby. You're going to get the rights, the royalties for victory lap. And you bound his soul for gold while you keep siphoning off of his money that was given to him through the blood lineage of his soul. And nobody's going to know you did it. And you're going to act like you're the, the, the sad wife. Now we know you're not the wife. The sad uh, life partner. Now we know you're not the life partner. He wasn't with you. He, he hated you. And you hated him. While she's up there saying she loves him, she misses him. They have the same DNA because you're carrying it to, to put the curse on him to draw his wealth to you. His blood, his hair, whatever jewelry. Whatever clothes you can get wearing his clothes. Oh, they don't know, but I know. That's why I'm pulling their coat today. Because Nipsey pulled mine. That's how you're in the DNA. Not because you really won with him, because you stole it. You stole his legacy. And you gave him an heir that was used. You don't even want. You ought to spend time with that little boy, Cross. And he was given the right name because he's got curses on him. You used him as a siphon for Nipsey. You used him to drain the blood of Nipsey. Because you know you couldn't use being his wife because he wouldn't marry you. And you couldn't get automatically half of his estate like you do in California. Or all, all of it, bitch. All. You couldn't get it because he would not marry. He wasn't stupid like you thought. His brother's not stupid either like you think. I was begging. Playing the victim. Because you're using the baby as a magic siphon. You are bloodletting and vampiring off the baby. That child might be fucked up in the head when it get bigger because the mother doesn't love it. And the mother is not nurturing it and really suckled it like she was supposed to off her breasts. But the breasts are poison because she's a walking, talking corpse. Walking dead, numbdigil. Pretending to be something that you're not. That baby's not blessed. You curse the baby. You said you wanted an abortion so you could get a, a role with John Singleton, but John Singleton really didn't want you for the role because you would have gotten it and they would have disguised you and covered the belly. But you are a beast. 
and that child basks in the belly of a female beast. A siren with a mermaid spirit designed to rob, steal, and kill. A setup bitch. And they've done this. You've done this before. And you, you got a sucker you're doing it to now. Right? That's all the baby is for. To use magic to siphon through the baby. Siphon Nipsey's estate and money through the baby and using the magic of your womb with the death spells and the death rays on that boy to have that boy shot. See, either way you cut it. When he signed that contract with his management, Karen, Jay-Z, and signed with Liar Cohen, the same thing was going to happen to him that happened to DNX when Liar Cohen with Def Jam had DMX ass up there, a junkie, and don't know who he is, and put a deeper pharmacia spirit on him and pour real 100% pure goat blood on DMX naked in that bathtub. Lord have mercy. He signed a death deal, rat dead, and had that goat head blood, which would be the horn of the ram, which would also be the ram of the forest, the head of Lucifer, the goat, G-O-A-T, the goat, the greatest of all time, with the horn on its head. DMX was going to go downhill then. Why do you think he was crying, doing all that dope, robbing people, beating people ass, fucking around on his wife, passing demonic entities through the wombs of all these women, and those children are cursed, and they're not going to go nowhere. And that girl trying to start a career, she was a set-up bitch, too, that had that last baby bind and thought she was going to come up off of that. Because they made her go down on this nigga to come up and had that baby she siphoned and off of. And I don't think she's going to have no big career either, helping to set up and crucify a god, DMX. So she's using that baby. That's just a business baby. She ain't in love with that baby. She hardly spent time with that goddamn baby. And I don't know, and I keep it to myself. Now, other people have said it and said Nipsey have said it to them. That baby don't look like him. And that's all I'm going to keep it pushing. I ain't going to say nothing else. With that big ass head, he looked like his mom, but he don't look like his daddy. And Nipsey says it, but I ain't going to say it. I'm, I'm not going to say nothing, okay? And he told me this lady is full of spirits. They done put mermaid spirits on her. They done went to water. They done did more sacrifices and did all kind of ritual because this lady is trying to do karmic spells and rituals to cover up her karma for killing Nipsey and push her karma away, but pull his money to her. She's trying to do spells to pull all of Nipsey's money to her. All of the deals and land, the casinos and everything he would have got, she want to kill him and take it away from him and pull it to her through the death spell, the corporate necromancy, the corporate necromancy of the contract, the con science and the con science community of that contract. Because why that boy didn't get shot till he signed that contract and got with that man and man, huh? Huh? He was a very dangerous gangbanger dealing with other gangs and ruthless wars. And he telling me there's another gang war coming for the summer that's already brewing Crips fighting Crips, Crips fighting other groups, it's going to be more death like it is that we just don't know it's still going on. And still gang members mad about Nipsey's death. And it's still gang members that were jealous and glad about his death. 60s against 60s. With blood that hit Pyru, some of them are involved in this man's murder and uh, the baby mama and his sister Samantha is talking to and dealing with some blood that, that really didn't like Nipsey. And the, the sad thing about it Samantha knows that some of these people she's talking to hate Nipsey and dealing with bloods and bloods were instrumental in his murder. But she done slept with him, ate with him, got high with him, allegedly in the spirit because this is all for entertainment purposes only. I don't know these people. These are alleged. I wouldn't have heard the man said to me. He wanted me to deliver the message to Samantha today. I ain't got no feelings about it. I'm not in it. In it. I believe I'm channeling the real Nipsey hustle, Arius. Joseph Ashkodom, he said his sister is against him. He said his sister, father, didn't like him, and she got the spirit of her father and the negative side of her mother in Samantha's body. And her father hate Nipsey. I don't know. I'm saying the spirit. So her father is cold toward Nipsey. Her father never liked him. And her father's family don't really fuck with her too tough. And says Samantha's father not really the father that he should have been. I don't know what I'm talking about, y'all. And I'm not saying this is fact. This is what Nipsey's saying to me. The father, her father was violent and ruthless and a drug dealer. I look, Lord have mercy. 
I'm willing to be embarrassed and cussed out about it because I don't know if that's true. And moved from California to different places, moving around and was involved in some murders, he said, and head decapitation. The father's ruthless and vicious. The father's no good and says she is her father's daughter. But he says she also is her father's son because she liked to eat pussy. Has been involved with drug dealers, drug dealing and, and drugs. Said her and his baby mama crossed to do drugs and get high and fuck. Fuck different people, said her spiritual teacher and the other people that come science community and put so many spells on Samantha that Samantha's being used as a vessel and also a siphon for her brother Nipsey Hussle. They try to summon Nipsey's spirit through Samantha and get her on uh, get her high and drunk. I don't know if it's high ayahuasca trip, but she does it on her own and she got a sex spirit on her, a bulldog spirit. And a damn nigger spirit. Fucking men saying women's. And they got people around her in the gangs and drugs. Lord forgive me. I don't know why I'm saying something so nasty this Sunday morning. But this is what Nipsey is saying. She get out of her body. They got her possessed with by three spirits. Three mermaid spirits dealing with sex, money, murder, and magic and mayhem. Got this girl an enemy of the state. And the enemy of herself. And she also dealing with Will Smith wife. And people tied up in that. They all tied up in that necromancy. Fucking and sucking. Damn half bull daggers by day. And damn sucking dicks at night. God damn it. And get together. They done charmed and necromance this girl. Because deal with corporate necromancy. And sexual necromancy. And water spirit. That will also be alcohol. And plant life spirit. Be nice to her. Oh Samantha. Why don't you call your brother? I talks to him too. I hears him. He talks to me. Be me. Oh, let's have a seance. Let's have a re call your brother down. We want to talk to Nipsey. Oh, we miss Nipsey. We love Nipsey. Tap, 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 tap in their damn hand together. Tapping their finger together like they damn retarded and shit. Looking like they got Down syndrome, motherfucker. So damn high. Eye leaning, nose leaning, ass gaped open and fucking leaking and goddamn leaning. Call some man. Call, call. Call uh, like a chick. Call your brother. Your brother still not here. Call your brother. Uh, I can call and see. Slurp. Man, look. Lord, forgive me. Call my brother. Possess. We want you to get possessed with Nipsey. Lord, have mercy. So you can channel and summon Nipsey, goddammit. And we can talk to him and have to ourselves. Then you can pass him in. We can pass the message. We can have a monopoly on Nipsey and make us some money. And then you write a book and talk about your life with your brother. And we're going to talk about your brother. We're going to summon him. And then we're going to have him speaking, God damn it. He's going to come through you and give a final message, a closing message, God damn it. As we done open your ass and mine up. Because I'm smelling cocaine. They in there on the powder, on the molly, on the liquor. They just busting it open, just pussy, just leaking pussy at you. Every goddamn with puss and dick and doing spells on this girl. That's what Nip said. I did so much spell on her. Got her like a flower child. She just floating around. She don't know if she going or coming. And her and Lauren, what they, what, 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 let me tell you one thing that draws them to each other. Because one of them does have, both of them have an innocence in them. Like a childlike innocence at them. At one point before they had a booty bust and was molested and raped and all kind of shit. They sold their soul out for gold. So she admires and looks up to learn and laugh and talking with her. And they like little girlfriends and giggling and smoochy face, kissing each other and shit. And, and this woman has lured this young lady in. Because the lady's lost that issue with her mama, disrespect her mama, disrespect granny hustle and shit. Talk about them and tell they business. They know all these people business. Get all in they business. She used to be friend with Tanisha. Now she friend with, with, with the actress. With the baby mama and it's having to set Tanisha up and took a baby and shit and trashing her and trying to humiliate her so she'll lose in a cold case. And to be honest with you, I'm going to drop this real quick. And I don't mean no harm, but Nipsey's saying he still don't want Tanisha to get full custody of his baby. He's still saying she unfit and bipolar and got mental problems and um, Black Sam can't trust her. She's working around him. She hiding something and she's sneaking. And she still ain't telling everything she know about Nipsey's goddamn murder. So you really, they both the same. I'm not saying she ain't love him in her own way and he didn't love her. 
I'm gonna tell you something straight up. Really, he had to like he he was obligated to fuck her, even though she do anything he said. He said I was obligated to fuck her. I was obligated to have that agreement with her. Would let her share custody. He said, I really didn't want to give my baby to her. I don't trust her. I see the way she handled her other children. I see the way she handled niggas. I see the way she handled herself. Loose in the ass, loose in the mind, unstable, not a leader, a follower, and easy to be compromised and would compromise my child. He said, I, I to this day, goddammit. Three years after my physical demise, I still don't want her to wake up every day and have me money and look into Nisha's eyes. He said, I don't want it. I don't like it. I don't dislike my baby mama. I love her. I'm not in love with her. She, I, I, I blame myself for her drugging and a lot of stuff she did because I was goddamn geeking and freaking fucking her ass, getting her eye on the shit too. I, I have a lot of guilt about that and I try to do what I can to make up for it and take care of her and I want her taken care of. I don't want any money taken from her, but I don't want any money given to her. You get that? God damn what the nigga just said. He said, I don't want any money. I don't want any money taken from her, but I don't want any money given to her. All money out, God damn it, all money in. He said, so she, you can keep giving her the money, all money in, but keep the money out of her custody. I, mm. He said, I don't mind her seeing her baby and having some rights to her baby. And as she gets older, she'll make her own decision. He said, but it's not safe with uh, uh, Tanisha. He said, it's, it's murder and danger and mayhem close to her dwelling. And, and she still have bad habits and bad judgment and bad influences. She got a spell on her too. Trying to make her kill herself. And if she does not commit suicide physically, mentally, emotionally, and public suicide, and suicide of her reputation. And suicide of her agreement and her bonding with her daughter. That's what they want to do. But she, her daughter loves her. And she loves her daughter. So let, let me make that very clear. I'm not saying that she doesn't. They love each other. But she conflicted in her ways. He said, and she is narcissistic in a way. Very angry and still craves dope. And sold herself out in any ways and compromised herself. So she compromised me. And she knows more about my, uh. I wonder, did she see that boy dead? He said, she saw me dead. She know that they were going to kill me. And she entertained the shooter. <laughs> and she knows about the plot and conspiracy. She knows Firebug and... You know what? Let me shut my motherfucking mouth up. <sighs> that little girl knows them shooters. He said, don't get him, my baby. I don't trust Tanisha. I love Tanisha, but I don't trust Tanisha. And I'm not in love with her. That's why I never married her. He said, because Denisha also threatened me. She was going to take my property from me. She would take my things. Even though I felt like she, I owed her some of what I had did her. The stuff we went through and what she did for me. He said, but she's conflicted too. I couldn't marry neither one of them. They both got hell in them. They both resent me. He said, Lauren hate me. She hate me. And she was angry with me. And wanted me to die. She she don't love me. She want to revenge. She saw me too. She filmed me. She saw me be killed. She saw how they led up to it. Touched me. She knowed I was in their possession. She wanted. She hated me. She's still angry with me. She don't love me. She was never in love me. She used me as a means to justify the end. She don't love me. It's just like I told y'all that vision that I had. I seen her on the bridge across from my house. She was standing on the bridge over 20. She had a camera on her phone and she sat a jogging suit. She was down here in Atlanta. I didn't nobody know, but T.I. and them, them other friends she know. She said, Alexis don't know that I know her address and I know where she live. I could send them crips in there and I had them kill her and shoot her down in her front yard like I had them help shoot Nipsey down at the marathon and I'll film it and I'll get off on it and come real hard. No, I got the film of them shooting that bitch right in front of her motherfucking house in her own goddamn yard. And then I sneak back to California and they won't even know I did it. Nobody even suspect 
me of doing it and send niggas up to put a hit on that fucking bitch because she talked too motherfucking much. <laughs> I seen that shit. And if you don't believe me, I had some friends vouch, can vouch for me because I, I would have Ricky on the phone. I would have a couple other people on that phone. Two years ago, I say, y'all stay on the phone with me because it's dark. I'm going to walk out here to my Herbert Curb and put my trash in it. Even though it's in front of my house and when I go out in the daytime, I said, if my phone drop and you don't hear me talking shit or laughing, immediately dial down one one because this bitch done had them niggas shoot me out here. I could feel them. I said, that she got niggas drive them drive by by my house. She, I believe this bitch done even came out here. They know where I live and they got my address. I always felt they know she know I could see her. I could fuck her, see this fucker. And then guess what happened? Just like little Kel, that taken up for Lauren, put my address, my whole address, whole name out a couple of weeks ago on YouTube. Um, somebody on Instagram last year put my address, my name, possible previous addresses and former addresses on Instagram. And who's the first person they tag? Lauren London, her manager, Karen Sybil, Big U, Jay Stone, Cowboy. Everybody in All Money In and Nipsey's Click tagged them. So she cannot say that she don't know my address and she don't know where I live. And I said, didn't I cheer you this fucking bitch? Is a slick, sneaky, passive, aggressive, dirty, violent, I'll put a hit on you bitch and watch them kill you kind of a bitch. Didn't I tell you the baby mama with dimples would do some fucking shit like that and the bitch, I know for sure she up doing it to him. Because the bitch was finna do it to me. She probably still thinking about this shit, goddammit. And then I had people verified. I cannot say their name because they are so afraid that the 60s will kill them. And they've already told them to kill them. They're, I kill you, bitch. Stop watching Alexa. Stop talking to her. Stop listening to her. I don't want you watching her videos no more. The bitch talk too motherfucking much. Somebody need to muzzle this bitch. She's a beautiful woman, but the bitch talk too motherfucking much. Somebody need to do something to this bitch mouth. And they try, they be trying to do it, goddamn it. Like I told y'all last week, they tried to do it, me in my mouth, fuck me in my mouth, and they came there, and this white bitch put her knee in my throat with this Chinese bitch that had stripped me butt naked and put that fentanyl powder in my mouth and no, goddamn it, and put their hand over my mouth while they had their knee in my chest. Die, bitch. Die, bitch, because you talk too motherfucking much, bitch. And I said, I know that what I mean, I know that what you're saying, call you going for one part on my body, my damn mouth, and my damn throat. I I, I know it. I know it. I know I had to fight them. Go, <sighs> oh, oh, just trying to get my goddamn breath. That bitch choked me so hard in my throat. Drove the her kneecap in the hole. And I thought, oh had to wake up kicking. Had to wake up, throw the cover off. I was sweating like a motherfucker. Had me sweating, trying to fight them, or two or three of them wrestling with me, trying to hold my hand back and hold my hand down while they were in my throat and mouth. Went out oh, in my mouth, out oh, in my mouth, out oh, in my mouth. Bitch, you and were talking to me. I said, I know it. I know I talk too much. But I got to do God's will, goddammit. I got to do God's will. Yeah, Iman would start sick, but you know what the fuck I'm talking about. Um, he said, the baby mama, he's still saying she set me up. And they, her, her manager, her spiritual teacher, the other management that they had, they doing heavy rituals to cover up what they done and to cover up any karma or any finger pointing or investigation towards her so that nobody will ever know she killed that boy and nobody will ever do no dirty shit like that to her or set her up. She want to get that karma off of her while at the same time keep siphoning Nipsey money and using that being that baby that she didn't love and didn't want. Siphon that man money out of his estate and siphon it out of Black Sam. I need want to set up Black Sam and she could take the whole estate she would. And give nobody else nothing. And Tanisha got her little cut. But I will say this from what he said. Tanisha's suffering real bad. She hate he died. He physically died. She missed him. Because he was crazy and funny. 
like he's funny over here with me and they had good times together. A lot of good love making and fucking and fucking different bitches and eating they pussy while she getting dick stuck down her throat and shit. Lord how much my body get hot sweating now. Like when I did the first reading on Tanisha, my pussy got hot. They had a lot of good fucking and sucking time together. And a lot of other people they pulled and just or just, just fucking booty 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 rocking everywhere. Pussy dick dope. They just wilding, goddammit. I'm mean, I'm sweating right now. My whole ass and everything just hot. Think about all kind of fucking they did, goddammit. And sucking and, and tag teaming bitches together. High five and bitch, you get the bitch, I'm gonna get the bitch, goddammit. Now we both get the bitch. We're gonna tag this buckle gonna be out of her mind. We're gonna fuck this motherfucker till she pass out and high five that we really get to eat and lay back and sleep. We got that bitch then. Ha ha. I got them, I got that. That they had some good time now. They both real geeky and freaky now. I'm hot as some sweat popping on my damn face. Just talking about this shit. Turning bitches out and turning bitches down. God damn it. Flipping them up, rubbing them, and turning them down. Face down, booty up. That's the way I like to stuck. See? Wearing motherfuckers out. God damn it. So they had some good time. They had some vicious fights. Tanisha can be vindictive, ruthless, put him out. They get to the argue. I'm going to go over here and sit for a little while because I fucked this bitch without her permission behind her back. And I, they got these little cold words and shit. Nicky by, Nipsey violate the code. And then when she fucks somebody, he get mad and break up. Then she he fuck somebody, she get mad and break up on to hit that man and fight that man and shit. It, yeah, they had some good times, but it was a roller coaster. He said, I couldn't marry that either. I couldn't wife that neither. She loved me in her own way. I love her. But it was never going to be meant to be like the actress. He said, I know that death. That bitch would have shot me in my seat after she got the wedding ring on her finger and boom it up. Rolled that man shit out and stored the shit and sold that man shit and took all that man cars and jewelry and shit. She could get away with it. And that's what she's doing now, trying to get away with it doing as much magic as they can to bring down, to cloak her, and to make her invisible to any suspicion of fact she helped kill that man. That we said, so she won't have to pay for what she done. So she won't have to pay for her sins. That's what they're doing, and they are holding Samantha hostage to get the rest of the money. Why they using her and her ass hijacking and kidnapping her mind. She possessed with three or four goddamn mermaid spirit and they using her, taking her money. Stealing money by using her as a siphon and using her all in her egg. Got her going against herself, going against her family, telling things she ain't got no business telling. While she thinking she happy and getting a payday, they using her ass and getting a payday off of her and selling her soul. By the time they finish with her, she's going to be so fucked up. She, she ain't going to know whether she going or coming messed up in the head. Because they done brainwashed her. They done put spirits on and got that girl mind totally submissive to the baby mama's side. The actress. Lord have mercy. And then I see the actress behind her back. Kiki, kiki, kiki. While they laugh like little children and they got that innocence a part of them in common. She used that to enslave and bind his sister in hell with demonic entities. She got the girl to sell her own self out, sell her brother out, sell herself out. She had like she's so in love with her brother. He said, she's not in love with me. My sister sold me out before they shot me. Teamed up in cahoots with the baby mama, that's the actress, with the dimple. Sold me out and sold her soul out. Said so she empty and they trying to use her to pull him over there to do more magic and hijack and capture that man's soul. And get more secret side of Because look like the baby mama that's an actress with the dimples. Some more money or some Bitcoin or some coin or something valuable. She don't know where Nipsey hid it at. She want to get the sister to tell. Or she want to bind his spirit and possess Samantha with Nipsey's spirit. And get her to tell them they man's secret or codes or safe deposit box or banks or what was in the house or something hidden. And then send Samantha to go get it. Fetch like a dog. And this dog that they're showing me, what is this dog? A Saint Bernard. We have to look up the meaning. What is a Saint Bernard? What does a Saint Bernard do? I don't know. Because he showed me a Saint Bernard. And I want to know if y'all feel like looking this up till I can get to it. Where the, where the dog was born and raised was it a hybrid 
Is it a mix? Where does it come from? And what does that do? Uh, then they show me a bloodhound in the woods, sniffing around. We know what woods also deal with grass, green, marijuana. Is there a wooded area near where uh, they say Tanisha works with Black Sam? Is there a wooded park or used to be? Are they cutting trees down in that area? That's weed. I know he sells marijuana. Are you trying to steal some marijuana? Are you trying to steal a strain or get money attached to it? Are you already getting some of Nipsey's money and proceeds from his weed? Or do you have a spy in the store with Black Sam that spilled his blood? He say some of the murders that murdered him be up in Black Sam's space or ones that are part of the group that conspired the 60s. Where they kidnapped him and was talking to Black Sam during the time Nipsey was missing before Black Sam got the call that he was under possession of the Necromancy Corporation. And he was necrotic. And he was in rigor mortis. Huh? Somebody was watching Black Sam do this procedure to stop Black Sam from being where Nipsey was to intervene. Somebody that knew about the shooting female. And I see the female. Dirty bitch that got his baby that knew about it and was watching, overseeing it. They had security and police were nearby as well. But I don't care what you motherfuckers say. The police didn't do all that killing on Nipsey. They helped. But them gang members did that shit. And the gang from Atlantic Records, a gang member and a leader was from Atlantic Records and Rock Nation. And with the 60s. But the police, I'm not saying they didn't oversee it, but they didn't do the direct shoot. They didn't have to. Too many niggas hated the boy and was jealous of him with the bitches. It was some gang bitches that sink that shit, seen them do that to that boy. Huh. From his own gang. They knew about the meeting. And they were kind of, look. I've always told y'all for three years, I have been willing to wrong, be wrong. And for three years, I have always said a boy told me that, and it's in the cowboy reading. I think I said a cowboy one, cowboy two reading, where I said that females were involved in that, and the baby mama and female gang members. They set the boy up. They watched it. Female watched and participated in the boy murder. That are gang members, his own OGs. And jealous women that he had even been with helped to kill him. I've said it, and I'm going to continue to say it until you prove me wrong. That there's no way I could be right. He keeps saying that they did it to him, and it's tied to the marathon. And who owns the marathon, and the different owners and strains of the marathon, and the weed, and the records, and the deal, and the management. They was all siphoning, and there was female. The female manager over Lauren, there was also the female manager of Mac Miller, and there was the female manager of Nipsey and YG. It's in that clique where they're doing black magic and stealing money. That's what he's saying to me. He's saying they're doing that to my sister. And I never believed my sister would be this low to let them trick her into this, even though she was mad at me and had issues with me. <sighs> they got her hypnotized, subjugated, bound, and mesmerized. That's what he's saying. He said, my sister didn't kill me. That's not what I'm saying. She didn't want to see me dead, even though she might have been so mad she thought it because she didn't like what I tried to tell her to do in the way I, I wanted her to go. He said, but she's dealing with the murderers and cold conspirators, and they just got her in la-la land. So high and so much black magic on her mind that she admired the bad and despised the good. Go get some own family for these peoples. Bound and in a relationship with these peoples. What else do Maine say? Because I think I've been on here too long. I appreciate y'all for loving me and supporting me. And I ask y'all to please donate to me because I really need help. And just to do these messages and to deliver them, I need safety and security and a place to live to do the messages for the Maine. 
And I'm so honored to do them. I do anything for him and I love him so much because he's taught me and helped protect me from danger while I'm living in the middle of a poisonous space. I could have died several times. And what people have want, he said, they're going to try to kill you, Alexis. My baby mama going to set you up. She's going to send them shooters. Next thing I know, I hear and I see she was tagged. And we have proof. She has my address. You can act like you think you're better than me and above me. All you want to, you don't pay me no attention. But I know you know me, Lauren. I know you know where I live. I know you don't like me. You can pretend you don't know me. I know you do. <laughs> I know you got my address, bitch. I'm not worried about y'all doing nothing to me because Nipsey warned me y'all were going to do it before you did it. You thought it was a surprise to me and I didn't know. I had been waiting on you and I had been waiting for it to be revealed. I prayed so they kept saying I was crazy. I prayed that it would, it would be revealed and you're tagged and your management is tagged and my address. We have this copy. We, I know you know me. Your teacher, all of them know me. I personally know them. Why you act like, all y'all act like you're better than me and I don't know, I'm crazy. You said I'm crazy, that crazy lady. Yeah, you know that I'm not though. And you, ha none of you have proven that I don't know you. I ain't been with you. I ain't been around you, all of that. Shannon chilled at it first. Nipsey made me chill. So it's funny that all oh, you crazy, you're lying, bitch. A lot of them not coming out of saying I'm crazy no more because now you know that I know and I want to let you know that I told everybody else so they know that I know you. They know I've been around you, hung with you, you stole from me, all of that. So you can't keep saying I'm crazy and I'm lying and I'm just fantasizing because I'm obsessed with Nipsey and making shit up because I know how y'all get down. Rob, lie, cheat, steal, set a bitch up, fuck on her ass, steal her soul. Get a pass, steal her money, steal her property, make her slave to lure other motherfucking unsuspecting stupid bitches in. And the video enemies in common. Now you can't say I'm lying and you don't know me and I don't know you. That's one of the reasons why he's so comfortable here. He had to tell me. You know, I know this person, I know that person, I know you dealt with, I know they fucked you over, they told me not to fuck with you. I said, they know me? Are you serious? They know me? They're not... Yeah, this, this, this person. I said, what? Get the fuck. He told me when he first came here, this is what you're going to do. And this is what who know you. And this is what they did. And they set my ass up. And I was just like, I'm, I don't want to be in this because it's going to bring up old wounds. And this ain't nobody going to fuck with you. I said, but you're not in your body. Who gives a fuck? Ain't nobody going to fuck with you. You listen to me. And people that love me won't let people hurt you. Once they see that you're for real. And you down with me. I said, okay. And I did it. He said, tell them. They think you're crazy and you're stupid and you're making this up. Tell them who you know and what you know. And all the motherfuckers set me up, set you up too. So, am I still crazy? Am I still a liar? I wasn't a liar from the goddamn begin. I was never lying. And see, that's another reason why they wanted to kidnap that boy like they did and kill that boy because they know that motherfucker wild and crazy as hell. And ruthless as hell with a very violent temper. And they knew that if Nipsey had gotten away, it would have been set up in a marathon. It would have been a marathon murder spree and blood would have been all over motherfucking California. Because that boy would, y'all know that shit. You know, you know that boy was skinny. Y'all know that motherfucker crazy and vicious and is a real goddamn general. And it, he, he had backing ready to go. Because people wanted him to be the new leader and take the place of big you and everybody fucking body else. People of different races and different neighborhoods wanted that boy. And they knew if they let him get up, all them old dirty head motherfuckers would have been a rap. Plus, they getting benefits off of getting money from the city. Got these children, baseball league and little leagues and uh, these uh, outreach program and claim. Big Yusufa and them other ones that they really about to elevate the community. But it's so fucked up. 
And the real people is dead. They getting money from the police to be informers to stay out of jail and shit. You think they won't let that boy rise up? A new king? A real lion king? Goddamn, that is about that shit? And loving people and elevating them and protecting them? Now, shoot this nigga down and see. We know the most comfortable way to do it is getting around people that he know. We're going to cover this shit. We're going to wrap this shit. We're going to choreograph this fake shit while they shooting a move on the weekend. We're going to wrap this shit up. We're going to film this shit. And we're going to get the computer expert to alter that shit and doctor that shit. So they think they seen a nigga being shot at 3.30 in the afternoon. But really, that's some footage mixed up with some other old shit. See? You know what? I'm finna go. I love y'all. I'll talk to y'all later, baby.